Hi, welcome to the Dynamic Duel podcast, where we discuss all things DC and Marvel related, review superhero films, and debate who would win in Marvel vs. DC matchups. I'm Marvelous Joe. And I'm his twin brother, Johnny DC. And this is the episode where we talk about all the news for, that came out of a 2017 San Diego Comic-Con. I had to really restrain myself right there from going, this is the Comic-Con episode. <laughs> I feel like I always do that for, this is the Wonder Woman episode. <laughs> this is the Spider-Man. I don't know. Uh, this is the Comic-Con episode. Yeah. It you, was a long, long two weeks, I feel like, leading up to this episode. Wasn't it? Well, it's because all this news comes out and you just want to talk about it right away, but yeah. you can't. Well, I mean, you can just, you know, not on the podcast. We try not to discuss too much of what we talk about on the podcast before we actually record. So it's more, uh, what's the word? Organic? Verisimilitude. Ver- verisimilitude. More real. I don't know what that means. Uh, more real? Yeah, I yeah, understand yeah. what that yeah. word is. Um, um, so basically in this episode, we're going to be going over the, the Justice League trailer, the Thor trailer. We're going to talk about the leaked Infinity War trailer that came out. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to watch it. And by you, I mean the listener, not you, Jonathan, because I know you've seen it. <laughs> um, but uh, if you haven't, eh, maybe do a little Google search before uh, before listening to that section. Uh, as always, we'll put all, uh, all the topics that we talk about in uh, the, the description for this episode. Right. So go ahead and go yep. through there. And uh, the time codes are listed there as well. So you can listen to what you want to listen to and not what you don't want to. Um, uh, we're going to be talking about the WB movie lineup that's coming out. Yeah, there's uh, the a series movies they of announced, logos. what they didn't. Yeah. Uh, some news about the movies that they did announce. We're going to talk about the Captain Marvel uh, concept art. Uh, we're going to talk about the Ant Man and the Black Panther news that came out from their panel, as well as uh, 20th Century Fox's panel with Legion and Doctor Doom. Ugh. <laughs> uh, and then we'll get into TV news with the, the Defenders, all the CW shows. Um, that'll be pretty quick, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about that in Humans trailer that came out as well. And then that's that's everything because this no, no, is no. there's still the Krypton teaser trailer. Oh, that's right. And the Marvel Runaways. Those those two are gonna be like really quick. Not we're not gonna talk about everything on this list for like twenty plus minutes. Some of it's gonna be like maybe fifteen seconds. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're, we're gonna go through it. We're gonna try to keep it under two hours, folks, <laughs> because it's late right now <laughs> and I'm tired. <laughs> So, um, and then I guess, no, again, nothing after that because this episode is all news all the time. Yeah. If you're just joining the podcast, usually we, uh, each episode either consists of a movie review or of a, or a like versus battle matchup fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, this episode is just going to be ju- just news cause there's just too much of it. Yeah. We don't want to have a three hour long episode. So, right. Or do we, I would, I'd listen to that. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> All right, um, before we get into the news, though, it's trivia time. Uh, Just like every episode, I want to give a special congratulations to A underscore David 1341 on Instagram for answering our last episode's uh, trivia question correctly. Uh, That question was, which two popular X-Men characters were were originally created by Dave Cockrum to be part, I can't even speak, to be part of which DC (laughs) superhero team, but were rejected? And he answered correctly with the two characters being uh, Nightcrawler and Storm. They mm-hmm. were originally created by Dave Cockrum to be part of The Outsiders, which is a spinoff of the DC uh, Legion of Superheroes. Yeah, well, it's not the like the Batman's Outsiders. It was it was it's a different Outsiders. Yeah, it's a different Outsiders. But he did get it correct. Uh, so yeah, congrats to a David thirteen forty one. Uh, you are going to be the recipient of a uh, dynamic duel no prize. Yeah. Uh, which is just, a, you know, it's a, it's a cool drawing that, that Jonathan will draw for you. <laughs> and he's um, a DC fan, so I get to draw him as a DC character, yeah, which is excited? awesome. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You've been drawing a lot of Marvel no prizes lately. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we have another trivia question for you guys this episode. If you get it right, um, you'll be in the running to be randomly selected to win a no prize as well. Right. Um, so this episode's question is uh, Comic-Con related. It's, what was the first DC film and the first Marvel film? to have a panel at San Diego Comic-Con's massive exhibition venue, Hall H. Yeah, specifically Hall H. The yeah, and by Marvel film, I don't necessarily mean Marvel Studios film. It could be any, it, shut up. based that's, off any Marvel character. I'll oh, shut up now. <laughs> like, we will be getting giving, a, I guess, a bigger hint yeah. later on this episode, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you have the answer, go ahead and submit it to our Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Do, just do a search for... Um, 
dynamic dual DC vs. Marvel, and you'll find us. Yeah. Uh, you could also reach us by email at dynamicdualpodcast at gmail.com. And, and feel free to, you know, leave that in the comments for this episode or direct message us or however you want to It's do better that. to direct message us. Yeah. That way, you know, everybody doesn't get in you on, limit your, the pool. <laughs> on yeah. your action. Right. So, uh, yeah, again, look forward to that uh, uh, hint later on in this episode. So let's get into the news. All yeah. Right. Um, so Warner Brothers started, kicked things off, I think, last Saturday. Yeah, it was Saturday. Yeah, uh, in Hall H with with you know their Warner Brothers lineup, uh, they saved all the DC news for for the end of their panel. Um, but the big thing to come out of that was the Justice League uh, sneak peek. I think technically it's a trailer. It's the third trailer. It's like the third trailer. Yeah, it's like the third trailer. I hate it when they, it's a trailer and they don't call it a trailer. Yeah, it's, it's just call it what it is. <laughs> um, but. Holy F. It was four minutes long, a little over four minutes, and it was four minutes of sheer glory. <laughs> it was fantastic. Um, so many money shots, it's ridiculous. Um, it was comprised of, a, like, just four minutes of money shots. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then, you know, it, it makes sense that with the popularity of, of Wonder Woman, it kicks right off with her, just busting oh, yeah. through a door. I guess right. Great is opening. That a bank robbery that's ha- happening right there. Yeah, it looks like she's busting up a bank robbery. I guess in in London. Well, she's based in in France. Yeah, but she she works at the Louvre, right? Yeah, but uh, the exterior shot of her when she's working in the museum was in London, as the dialogue's being spoken. So I'm actually thinking that like she's some of her work is taking place in London in this case, and she's working at a London museum as a curator or whatever uh-huh. restorer. Um, the lead guy, which I have to say, is like a really cool job. I don't know if I've said that yet, but that is a cool job for Wonder Woman. To yeah, have. sure, I guess so. Whatever, man. <laughs> so the lead guy walking into the bank, he has like some red trim and he has like uh, purple-ish pants. I th- I thought it was the Joker at first, but they never showed his face. No, they didn't. Um, do you think we could like be getting a surprise cameo from the Joker, or do you think it's somebody else, or do you think it's anybody at all? Like anybody, like th- you don't think they would waste this opportunity to put like a low level uh, crime guy from the comics? I you? never actually considered it ever being the Joker, honestly. Um, well, he has purplish pants. They're it's like real dark purple. It's subtle. I think they're like blue, honestly. Eh. I don't know. Eh. I don't think it's the Joker. I don't think be- it's anyone major. I think it's just a, a bank robbery. It would be cool if it was someone, I guess, from the DCU. Maybe there's a reason they're not showing his face. I didn't even think about that. that. I don't know why. That was my impression. That, like, that's the reason? Because it's, it's like a big reveal in some way, maybe? Or like an Easter egg that they just don't want to spoil. So maybe not a big reveal. Yeah, I mean, the, there's really no way to, to, to tell. All I know for certain is that Wonder Woman is kicking some major ass at the beginning of this trailer. Yeah, it's pretty good. I was surprised when she got hit in the head with the, yeah, with the butt yeah, of the like, gun. Yeah, I was like, that's not nice. You deserve to get punched <laughs> in the face, you jerk. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it goes from there into talking about, like, uh, you know, how much hope that Superman brought to the world, um, which, which is a good thing... I, I don't know if the previous films established that well enough. I think the end of BBS really tried to push that home. Yeah. Um, but so I'm, I'm kind of glad that they're, they're trying to establish that at the beginning of here because that's what Superman is supposed to be. Yeah. You know, they always talked about this film, you know, you know, being written by Jeff Johns and everything sort of like bringing more, more hope to the DC cinematic universe or DC film universe. Yeah. I prefer DC films over DC extended (laughs) universe. Um, but uh, it's yeah, so that's it's it's encouraging. I mean, it may not be totally in line with what we've seen from the character, but then again, like Superman as a symbol to like people in that exist inside the DC universe, you know, probably see him as this huge beacon of, of hope, not knowing like all the conversations that he's had with his mom about whether or not he should do it at all, you know. So I could totally see him as as what Batman's describing him as. Yeah, Batman, he mentions that, you know, he brings up hope later on in the trailer. At the beginning of the trailer, it's just a newspaper headline that, that you know, mentions it's a, you know, world without Superman is essentially a world without hope. But um, they do say, like, around the same time at the beginning that, like, I guess Batman hasn't been around since the death of Superman, 
which I thought was interesting. Uh-huh. Um, he's it's definitely Superman has definitely made a huge impression on Bruce Wayne, um, which is good, which is really good, I think. Um, but man, that shot of Batman on the gargoyle, that's so money. Oh my gosh. <laughs> first money shot. Yeah. I, I guess the first money shot is of Wonder Woman doing the spin kick. But that's the, definitely the second money <laughs> shot. That's a lot of cheek. I, I <laughs> realize it more in, the, in this trailer than I did in the previous one where they had the same scene. It's like, geez, all right, come on, it's pretty <laughs> blatant. But uh, they, it's weird because they, Diana and Bruce like give deliver the same lines that they did at the end of uh, Batman v Superman, where she says, you know, uh, the age of heroes was supposed to be over or something like that or oh yeah um and then you know bruce i guess did, was that line given at the end of bbs oh gosh no, no it remember. wasn't it was in the trailer no, that's right it was in the trailer before this i don't know what i'm talking about and apparently <laughs> this is where that line comes from um yeah he says it has to uh so uh you know then they we get to see themiscara again which is really cool to see it again so soon yeah it was cool to go back there um, in like modern day, you yeah, know? Yeah. It makes sense that this, like they're showing all this after the Wonder Woman movie came out, because if we had seen it beforehand, it would have felt a little alien, I guess. Oh yeah. A little different. Yeah. All the trailer reactions I've seen, they're like, Oh, the mascara. Yay. We're back. Like, people <laughs> have so many good, strong feelings towards it. Uh, I know I definitely did when I saw it. I was like, Oh yeah. Awesome. And we see a boom tube. We see a freaking mother. We see a motherfucking boom tube. It does not look like what I thought it was going to look like. Honestly, um, it's uh, yeah. I mean like in the cartoons and stuff. Like, I'm used to seeing it depicted as, like, this huge, like, blinding light just kind With, like, of... rings coming out of it? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But this is more like an actual, like, tube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, like, like a futuristic, like, holographic tube kind of thing. Yeah, it's... it's. I noticed it has a blue sheen, which... I'm used to, like, a yeah, yellow sheen or Or just, sheen. like, a white sheen or a red sheen. Um, this one is blue. I wonder if it has any connection to, like, the phantom drive you know that sort of created its own like teleportation kind of thing and you know you you've hypothesized that the flash gets his power and from like some kind of phantom connection zone. to the phantom zone or like speed force or like the speed force is like maybe the phantom zone i don't know i thought that was an interesting connection there because his lightning is blue yeah that was just one of my theories yeah I don't know. um and who knows if, if this boom tube is related in some way. It's, it'd be kind of interesting. Um, but so the way they de- they de- depict the boom tube, though, do you think it is actually, like, does the tube extend all the way from its origin point to its destination point? And it's like one long physical, not physical, but like energy tube kind of thing? It is long, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um... I don't want it to be that way because I've always, uh, my, I've always thought of of uh, boom tubes as being more like like the video game portal. I love that game, um, and just you know you you step from one side into another. Um, so I was, I mean, again, this is a, a different boom tube depiction than I've ever seen. I don't hate it. It is different, um, and it was interesting that I was automatically able to recognize what it was. Yeah, uh, I can't wait to hear. Well, it's because it looks like a tube. Yeah, it's a giant. <laughs> what else tube? could it be? And there was yeah. a loud boom that preceded it. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, and then we, you know, there's the mother box there. So, um, you know, the the uh, you know everyone's speculation about what the story was, and I guess it, it's not really speculation because it, it was it's, it is it is in the synopsis for the film about you know the mother boxes and stuff. We yeah. get to see Themyscira's mother box. We get to see Queen Hippolyta freak out. Then we get to see Steppenwolf. And we only catch glimpses of him, but holy crap, he looks intimidating. Like, really intimidating. Yeah, that axe is... No uh, joke. No joke. Yeah, for he, sure. His voice is a little hard to understand. It is. I, I, don't, I don't watch I, it a second time to try to get everything that he was saying. Yeah. I'm, but what he did say was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't know what the first line was he said. Uh, I guess he says, uh, no protectors here. Yeah, no protectors here. And then, you know, I, I think as he says that, we get to see... Remember that footage that Zack Snyder, like, released a long time ago about, like, Aquaman swimming through the water? Oh, yeah. It it's was like a, that like, same, test VFX that same footage. footage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they showed Aquaman footage during their the, the Warner Brothers panel. They didn't release it online, but uh, it sounded pretty cool. 
And I'm still really curious to see how they're going to depict like spoken language underwater. We didn't get to see that here, but should be just be tons of bubbles. Just well, no. I, uh, James Wan was talking about that. He was saying they're not. They can't do it that way because that implies that there's air in their lungs when uh-huh. there's not. So maybe it'll just be them speaking, but you could just rationalize it through like magic reverberation. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe something. He looks really cool though. Um, I can't wait to. It just it gets me really excited and pumped for the Aquaman movie. Well, how do like animals make noises underwater, like dolphins and stuff? You can still sound still carries through water, and you can like push yeah. water through your vocal cords and stuff. But have you ever tried to like talk underwater? Yeah. It sounds it sounds horrible. Yeah, garbled. You know. Um, <laughs> Imagine the whole movie just like that. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt they're gonna do that. But uh, no. So he says, you know, no protectors here. No and lanterns. Then, then he follows it up with no lanterns. I did not expect that at all. I was like, oh, shit. Right when he said that. Actually, after he said that, I was expecting a cameo from Green Lantern in the trailer. Uh-huh. It was just like a random teaser shot. Dude, maybe there is. Maybe there is. In the trailer? Yeah. And at the very end, you know, we don't know who Alfred is speaking to. At the well, very end of the trailer when he says, like... Well, whoever they are, they said, have red shoulders, so... Yeah. Yeah. It's Superman. It could be Flash. It's not Flash. No, actually, I've seen I've seen speculation about this like on Reddit um, because of the the in BVS when uh, the Flash comes to visit Bruce right after his nightmare dream and he says, you know, am I too late? Uh, I'm too late. Uh, I've heard a lot of speculation that maybe in this film, like the Justice League loses to Steppenwolf, so the Flash has to run back in time. And, uh, I don't know, something like, you know, the Flash visited Bruce, so it makes sense that, you know, Bruce would probably tell Alfred that, hey, the Flash may be visiting. And instead of being too late, now, now Alfred's, you know, know, he's hoping that he's not too... No, it's Superman, man. It's Superman. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. Flash was too (laughs) soon in in BBS. Now, now Alfred is wondering if he's (laughs) too late. That is such a stretch. It's totally Superman. I I, I believe it. I mean, I think it could totally be Flash. Someone made a convincing argument. I mean, (laughs) it makes sense because the the dialogue, I mean, he does say, you know, hope. He does use the word hope at the very end. So it doesn't apply Superman. But then just the line of, you know, where Flash says, am I too soon in BVS to Alfred saying, I hope you're not too late. It's a red shoulder. We don't know. You don't know. Don't act like you know. You think they're fucking with us? I mean, all signs point to Superman. Most signs point to Most Superman. Most signs point. That's, and that's who I initially thought it was. But then when I heard this theory, I was like, that would make that scene make sense in BVS. And maybe they've been planning that from the start. No, because the scene in BVS was all about Lois being the key and stuff like that. Well, yeah, I think I think Flash goes back in time to... So this theory, again, on Reddit, <laughs> this is just a theory. Uh, Superman goes bad. So then Flash has to go back in time and, you know, say Lois is the key to turning Superman good. So that they don't all die. Huh. Actually... I believe you now. <laughs> I want it to be that because then you don't have to do the injustice thing. Yeah, and that scene makes sense in BBS. There's, you know, that connection there. You know, I don't know. It, but it, the, I liked it, it makes the nightmare scene seem even more outlandish because the time travel scene in BBS, and this is getting off topic, yeah. but the time, the time travel scene I thought was in relation to the nightmare scene that he had. The, yeah. the nightmare vision that, that Batman had. And in that vision, Superman was bad. Uh huh. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just Superman. Okay, I'm, I I flopped again. I'm flipping, flopping, <laughs> flip, flip, flopping. Anyway, yeah. All right, okay, um, back to the trailer. Um, but like we get some cool shots of you know like Cyborg as he's saying that and and Super uh Batman Batman's looking at this like hologram of Superman. I've s- seen so many people um say that that is a woman's leg. I in the disagree. hologram. Disagree. Yeah. I, I think it's just Henry Cavill's meaty leg. <laughs> you know, it has like, some curve to it, but that's muscle. Yeah. You know, Not I don't yet. think it's like it's a feminine Superman. hip. Or are of. they are they kind of conjecturing that it's Supergirl that he's looking at? Yeah. That now. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. No, it's Superman. Because there's always been that, you know, speculation. Oh, oh you know, who opened the, 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 the pod that's open up in the, in the, in the scout ship from, from Man of Steel? That kind of thing. 
It's, I don't think they're going to introduce Supergirl in this film. No. Um, maybe Black Canary. I don't know. I still... I don't know. Um, there's a pretty cool scene of... of uh, right when he... After he says no lanterns, he says no Kryptonian. Uh-huh. And Which... see the red cape. Uh, also, like, how does Apocalypse know about Superman? Maybe he's been... It he looks like he's maybe been watching Earth, but maybe hasn't done anything because Superman has been on there. Or maybe then, Lex Luthor told him about Superman during their, like, communion... Or something like that, yeah. yeah. And now that the Kryptonian is gone, he feels like he has his opening. Yeah. So he sends Steppenwolf. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Uh, we get to see Barry Allen, like, poke his finger through some glass. And it's interesting how the glass warps. It's just a cool visual. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just kind of showcasing some powers. Um, and we get to see what I think is part of the flashback going back to the beginning, like, the, the prologue of the film where the Amazons fight Steppenwolf uh, for the mother boxes, which I think is going to be really cool. It's going to be really cool, again, to see. Uh, Visually, that scene feels very much like the opening battle scene to the first Lord of the Rings film, where like they're explaining the history of how the rings were created and, and the battle with, yeah. the, with the elves and against Sauron and everything. Yeah, yeah. kind of feels like that. Yeah, definitely. We get a great line from Alfred, where he's like, oh, I miss the days where the hardest thing we had to do was fight you know, wind up penguins. That's a great <laughs> line. There's some humor in this trailer. There's a, quite a bit of it, actually. Does that mean we'll never see Penguin as a bad guy because they won't take him seriously? Do you think? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. That's a good question. I'm sure Matt Reeves would find a way to to do him justice. Um, there's a lot of red sky in this trailer. I noticed, and it wasn't there in the previous trailers. No. Do you think that's a Whedon uh, addition? No, I don't think so. No? No, I think... I, uh, I have to say, it's it's hard to find any of Whedon's stamp on this. Yeah, you know, honestly, I, th- I think it may be too soon to have had any of his, his work in in this trailer. I do see, like, even from, like, the fir- very first trailer that we got, like, last year's Comic-Con, like, a lot of animated influence, just, like, um, you know, the scene where, like, they're, they're, like, sort of set against, like, this sunset backdrop? Oh, in Justice it's, League? Yeah, yeah, it's a very, like, Justice League you know, unlimited to me. Yeah. And then, uh, the red skies is very, you know, like it's very Bruce Timm. Batman, the animated series. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, it's, it's kind of nice to see that. Um, you know, Aquaman says, you know, honestly, I think we're all going to die. It, Jason Momoa is such a badass in this trailer. Every, you know, the more what you see of Aquaman, f- the more you love him. I know. Right. Right. The, my, one of my favorite scenes in this trailer if, I, when it's so hard to choose, demon? but when he's surfing the parrot demon, it's like, of course, if, if any character is going to be surfing any kind of flying character, it's going to be Aquaman. Yeah. You know, and then he just crashes through the building. And not only that, he crashes all the way through. And not only that, he like skids off of him and like whips his hair. Like a little flare. Yeah. And that's pretty, it's, you know, if any other actor was doing it, it might be a little cheesy, but he, he, he pulls, pulls it off. Because I think Jason Momoa might actually be like a real life badass. <laughs> so he knows how to act like a badass, you know? Yeah, no, he's not even acting. That's just, that's just Jason Momoa, <laughs> you know? Um, no, and then, you know, they, they also so, show some snippets from like that. I, I think it's a, a tunnel. They, they always said like there was this big fight scene in a, like a tunnel that went from Metropolis to Gotham. I think this is that tunnel. I think, you know, and the Nightcrawler is in here as well. It looks so. like a vertical tunnel, like more yeah, like a it silo. Does. Silo kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, when I, when I first heard that described, I thought it was, you know, like a um, like subway tunnel or something like that. But this is, yeah, yeah. very it, vertical. It's kind of hard to tell what the end set piece is. Is it in the tunnel? Is it in the city? Uh, is it... I think there was like this weird, uh, it almost looked Kryptonian, but it might might be apocalyptic, like interior of a ship kind of thing. It looked very alien. Mm -hmm. I don't, that might be it. I don't know. I think it starts in the tunnel because like, you know, they're talking and you know, Wonder Woman's like, she gives that line, like don't engage alone. We do this together. Yeah. So I think it starts, uh, in the, in the tunnel and then it works its way out. That's just a guess. I have no idea. But, uh, another one of my favorite pieces from this trailer was the flashes line of you guys all you know see me do battle i've never done battle before i just sort of shoved people then run away (laughs) such a great line delivery it's hilarious it's funny it definitely shows that you know he's he's uh still early on his career you know yeah Yeah. um and then (laughs) he's a good actor yeah he's a good actor we get to see cyborg into like integrate with the um 
what was it called? Nightcrawler. The Nightcrawler, the Batman Batman's vehicle. Yeah, yeah that yeah. climbs. Yeah. So that was pretty cool, and he gave like a very like robotic performance, which I, I know like a lot of people. I not that I've necessarily seen this online, but like a lot, I know a lot of people are concerned because their cyborg is very like booyah and very like energetic and funny and comical. And I like a cyborg that kind of skirts the line between human and machine. I. I like the idea of a cyborg that when he's doing cyborg stuff, like integrating with the machine, he becomes robotic. I like the concept of instead of a uh, a man that has that is mostly machine. I like the concept of a machine that thinks it's a man. And that's that's an interesting. I hope, concept. I hope they I hope they play that concept up. Very I think well. they they definitely will. But I'm really hoping too that we get like almost two almost two performances from, from Ray Fisher, you know, one of him being a man. And, uh, you know, I think, he, you know, not that I've necessarily seen him in anything cause he's a theater actor, but, uh, I'm confident that he's good enough to be able to pull something like that off. And I think that'd be really interesting to see. Yeah. Um, you know, and then the, you know, there's again so many money shots that just kind of like go throughout the trailer. We just see my favorite one is you know Batman against the red sky, um, tons of explosions and stuff like that, um, and then it you know culminates in in a rooftop scene that we you know were was described to us like last year when yeah. they did the set visits of you know they're all on the rooftop talking with Commissioner Gordon and he turns around and they're all gone. Yeah, and then the I heard some people say they're like, "Oh, that's Whedon's influence." I'm like, "No, no, that, that scene was filmed a long time ago." Who said that? Some people, just just, just people, just slap them, <laughs> slap them. No, yeah, that was that was there. That's been there for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, so you know, then we we get the titles, and then we get the tease, and that wraps up the trailer. Again, we don't know who it is. I think it's the Flash. I kind of hope it's the Flash, but it may be Superman. Who knows? I still really like how the Speed Force is displayed. It's yeah. it's all it's okay. It's teleportation <laughs> with a jet stream. That's what it is. Essentially, I, except when they slow it down. When he says, "Oh, that's rude," and then just like pew, dissipates. It's he almost like like shrinks into the in, into like the 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 field, the trail that's left behind. Does he? Almost. I it, I didn't notice that. That's to that's me. How I saw it. That's how I. Just, it's teleportation with a, a trail. I don't know. It's it's, it's pretty cool. It's cool. It's really. Cool. I like the way they do it. Visually awesome. Yeah. All right. Enough of that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Onto the good stuff. The Thor Ragnarok <laughs> official trailer. No, no. But actually, before you get into that, like, which tr- did you prefer the Thor trailer to the Justice League? Obviously. Trailer? Shut up. Obviously. No way. Uh, did the Justice League trailer have a talking Hulk? No. Then it automatically <laughs> loses. <laughs> Um, if if it had a Superman, it would have. They can't do that though. Don't <laughs> yeah, don't spoil that. No, I mean the, the it was it was a great trailer. The it, Thor it trailer. was a good trailer. It was a fantastic oh, trailer. No. I was gonna say about the Justice. Oh, League. Justice League. Yeah, w- heck yeah, it was. It was it was it was good. It wasn't it wasn't Thor though. Whatever. Uh, the the style of the Thor Ragnarok trailer. I mean, it, it the the trailer pretty much picks up off, picks off where exactly uh, where, where the first trailer the, left the teaser off. left off. Yeah, of. yeah, yeah. Um, did I say that right? I have no idea. <laughs> but, um, so it, like it opens up on Sakaar and like Thor, like after meeting Hulk is like, oh, so much has happened. I, you know, I lost my hammer. So much uh, has happened in one day. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. That all happens in one day. That's kind of surprising to me. Um, but it, it, it's, they're really going for laughs here. They story. are. Yeah. And I remember quotes a long time ago from Chris Hemsworth when, after the, First Guardians of the Galaxy came out. He was really outspoken about how much he loved that film and how, how he wishes the next Thor movie uh, would be like that, you know, kind yeah. of like out there. And so the, you, you, he kind of had this creative influence over the shape of this film. And, and I, most of it comes from Taika Waititi, the director. Yeah. It's super fascinating, though. I just like looking at it. Um, it's still really, like, just really colorful. It, it is... It, I, I don't know if it's new ca- new cameras they're using because I noticed that the Guardians, you know, everything the Guardians put out last year was was really colorful too. But it just looks really good. Yeah, ever since that one video came out on YouTube that was like knocking the color palette of all the Marvel films. Yeah, like every single Mar- Marvel film that has come out since then, including Spider Man Homecoming, has been really yeah. vibrant. Yeah, I have to sure. say. Yeah, uh, including this one is like with the greens with when he's talking to Bruce Banner. I love that line where he's like, "We had a fight." He's like, did I win? He's like, no, I did easily. 
That doesn't seem right. <laughs> well, what well, happened? <laughs> really, really great kind of organic humor that and Thor yeah, organic and, as as I know him is not a jokester, but he, he doesn't cocky. Quite, he doesn't quite seem that, yeah he's cocky. He doesn't he doesn't seem like a jokester in this. Like the humor seems very like like it's genuine. They, they're not necessarily trying to be funny. It's just funny. I guess. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they they're they're kind of they're towing they're towing the line. I know a lot of people um, were were hesitant about the idea of the film being even funnier than like maybe the previous films. But I think in this wild scenario, it's so ridiculous. Like just the setting is so ridiculous. The 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 plot kind of the setup and everything is a little out there. Yeah. But it still works. Yeah. It fe- interestingly enough, I don't know how it works, but it does. So kudos to the filmmakers involved. I think. Hella, played by Kate Blanchett. She looks like, like she's having so much fun. Doesn't she? Yeah. yeah. She is like not not hamming it up. No. But what's the positive word for hamming? Um, just having a lot of fun, I guess. Yeah. yeah. She 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 looks like she has a good time being evil. She, I think she'll do a great job at at playing an evil person. She she, she seems like really fucking evil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just I'm the, the goddess of death. Her line delivery. Yeah. She looks super sinister. She might even be a little bit. Scary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hope she is. Uh, well, I thought she was scary from the very first trailer when she crushed Thor's hammer. It's like, you know the stakes. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah, I thought it was impressive. I didn't necessarily think it was scary. That's but, scary. But in this one where she's like, uh, I thought you'd be happy to see me or I thought you'd be glad to see me or something like that. And just her line delivery, like, oh, how I miss this or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the shots with her. Just like when she's fighting the Valkyrie, that's one of the the Valkyries, I should say. That's probably that's beautiful this, one of the scenes I'm looking forward to the most out of this whole thing, just because the way it's shot and how it seems so surreal and so not grounded in like real world, like earthly reality. No, it's like a mythology. It's like I mean, yeah, straight actually, from mythology. Yeah, it looks like mythology on on the screen. She. It looks like she kills all the Asgardians and turns them into zombie Asgardians because we see them later on um, in one of the shots in the trailer. They're like green, green skeletons wearing yeah. the Asgardian armor. With like glowing green eyes. So her power as the goddess of death may be to create zombies. Which is a cool power. <laughs> it's a, it's not cool. It seems like one of her other powers is to like create multiple swords that she can throw with accuracy or something. I wasn't sure if those were her swords or like the Valkyrie swords. I guess they have spears. Yeah. Like it almost like she can like shoot swords from her body. We see her spinning later on. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on there. I honestly. like, I it looks took that cool frame but... by frame. It's, it's still hard to tell what's going on right there, but yeah, she can like shoot blades from her body or something, which is, that's actually just speculation on my part. But if it is true, that's kind of weird. We do get to see Valkyrie in, like, a new suit, like, battle armor, like yeah. her Valkyrie armor, yeah. which is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's not like the comics, really. It's not too comic accurate, but it looks really cool. No, yeah, in the comics, it's it's black. She has, uh, like, metallic boot plates. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, but the, the, it, it's like, a, it's a leotard kind of thing, though. She has, yeah, she yeah. has tall, knee-high boots in her. But in this, it's it's mostly... It's like a full body suit. Like, white metallic, almost like a, almost like a pearl kind of sheen to it. Yeah. She's, she still has the blue cape like she does in the comics. And uh, instead of a spear, she has this sword, but... Uh, it's just a cool look. She, yeah, she looks, she looks damn cool. You know who else looks cool? The Hulk. Hulk has a new haircut. New haircut, yeah. Um, I'm wondering if they, like, sh- cut his hair while he was, like, being, like living it up as a Sakaran uh, celebrity gladiator kind yeah. of thing. But Mark Ruffalo has the matching haircut. Ignore that airplane if you can hear that. <laughs> um, but it, it's I've always kind of liked the shaggy hair look uh, for the Hulk, but this close-cropped Hulk is, is pretty cool too. Yeah, I've always preferred sort of like the Lou Fregno as well. And of course, in the comics, he's always like sort of like or majority of the time he's like been depicted with you know the, like the sides of his head just like shaved more like a military style yeah, of, yeah 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 so it's it's kind of cool to see that look on screen yeah I'm just glad they didn't go with the mo haircut because sometimes in the comics he has like the bowl like mo from the Three Stooges <laughs> yeah, haircut yeah I don't want to see Hulk or Mark Ruffalo with that haircut ever it was really interesting because I I completely forgot that 
uh, Bruce Banner, like, has no memory of his time as the Hulk. Yeah. And that was established in The Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton. Yeah. Um, I totally forgot about that. He just gets so, flashes occasion- occasionally. So when, when I saw, uh, you know, when, you know, Mark Ruffalo was like, oh, where are we? I was like, wait, what? And then I remembered that. And that's an interesting dynamic. He's been Hulk for so long that, like, he has no idea where he is. Yeah. That would be disorienting. Um, so... I my theory is still that he got there to Sakar by like going into space in the Quinjet and then accidentally going in a black hole or something or a wormhole. That's Sakaar. weird. That's you know how far away we are from a black hole. <laughs> it might be uh, maybe like some Ravagers pick him up or something, and then like it turns out like he's way too volatile to like be on their ship, so he they like jettison him out into like a wormhole or something like that. I don't know. Maybe because we know that Ravagers have come by near Earth again recently because they had a zoom in guardians of the galaxy too so eh, you never know maybe but, it's bruce banners <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> bruce banners zoom yeah <laughs> that would be awesome actually that 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 would be awesome um it looks like the climax of this battle i mean well okay it's well, kind but, of a spoiler don't you think yeah before that we have the spoiler we see that they escape sakar basically yeah and they're back on asgard with the help of loki where the final fight is yeah loki I don't know how Loki ended up in chains in that scene where they found him because I know he goes from you know sitting at the side of of the Grandmaster to being in chains. Yeah, maybe he somehow betrayed the Grandmaster or something. Maybe. I always thought he was working with Hela because like in the I, I can remember if it was the first trailer like we see him like just tearing through uh, Asgard, Asgard, as, as I said Asgard <laughs> <laughs> with the Z kind of sound. <laughs> So yeah, he's flipping yeah. his daggers, but that yeah. might be him actually fighting Hela. Yeah. We don't know. Uh, we do see Fenris, the wolf, in this. Uh, he's in. He's known in Norse mythology as Fen- Fenrir. Right. But in Marvel Comics, he's known as Fenris. Um, That's dumb. He's just. Uh, he's actually Loki's son, but I bet you he won't be in this in this movie. Um, but he fights. He's a big ass wolf who fights Hulk. It looks like a pretty cool fight. I don't know if it'll be reminiscent of the Hulk dog fight from the 2003 <laughs> Ang Lee movie where he fought those Hulk dogs. Right. Hopefully it isn't. Like, but we do see him like spreading open its jaw, and that's what he did in that movie. He like broke the the pit, the bulldog's jaw. So sad. Yeah, poor guy. <laughs> it's not the only monster Hulk fights in this trailer, too. No, oh my it's not. Gosh. So uh, the very last money shot is uh, Surtur the Fire Demon. So we have to assume part of this movie takes place in Muspelheim, um, which is, well, well, actually, I think in mythology, Hela's hell, uh, her hell realm is on Niflheim, or, yeah, which is the icy realm. Uh But the movies, they call to the icy realm Jotunheim. So it's all effed up. Oh, jeez. They're obviously not sticking to the mythology, but... Uh, so I don't know what planet they'll find Surtur on, or what realm, rather, but I'm going to guess it's going to be Muspelheim. It's probably going to be Hela's realm. He looks badass. He looks he, so huge! He is so He's much... so big! How is the Hulk going to punch him without getting burned? Well, I guess he has a tough enough hide. I've seen him, like, go into lava and stuff, the Hulk. So, it'll... it'll that that'll I can't. It's gonna be a good fight. That's another good scene I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to. That's not even, like, my favorite, like, money shot of the whole trailer. Is it... The Raiden Thor? Yes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that probably is the great money what shot. What are you, the uh, of the goddess of death? What are you, the god of again? God of, god of lightning. God yeah. Of, god of thunder, yeah. rather. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, it, He's always been able to wield lightning powers without the aid of Mjolnir. He's, he just channels it through Mjolnir in the comics. Uh, it's not often that you get to see it depicted, though, because how often does he lose Mjolnir, you know? Right. Um, so this is really cool. This is really cool to see. Um, he looks like a badass. He It'll does. be a cool scene. There, there is another battle that takes place between him and Hela. It looks like in the throne room, and he's holding the staff of Odin. Oh, what's what's the name of that? Like Grungnir or so, something, something like, like that. Yeah, because you know one it's of those with a G. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many like I don't know if the final fight's gonna be there, or it's gonna be on the Bifrost, the Rainbow Bridge, or if it's gonna be on Muspelheim with Surtur. There are so many great set action set pieces here, though. Uh, it's going to blow me away. Yeah. yeah. D- did you think that it was spoiled by the fact that they showed that they were, like, on the Rainbow Bridge fighting? No, I don't think so. 
Spoil, spoil what? The fact that, you know, they escape mm-hmm. Sakaar. It didn't then... spoil me personally because I, that's the story. They escape Sakaar and go back and fight Hela. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's a big deal. I yeah. don't think, uh, I don't know if, I guess it would be a big deal to people who assumed that the climax of the film takes place still on Sakaar. Yeah. But I don't know how many people that was. Yeah. There, there's a great scene going back to Sakaar real quick for the, for the last shot of the trailer. Um, right before the, the Surtur scene, we see Hulk talk and yeah, I mean, if fantastic. He's been, if he's been Hulk for a while, the, you know, he's definitely established some kind of, you know, vocabulary. Yeah. I mean, okay. So how many times have we heard Hulk speak prior to this he said betty and hulk smash in the incredible hulk film he said puny god in the avengers film and we haven't really heard him speak since then uh but the voice is pretty spot on yeah <laughs> i it like looks like mark just, ruffalo yeah all, all and all his little like facial expressions like facial twitches too like when he's like sniffing when he's like thor like water <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's very true to character too because like Hulk always Hulk is a very cocky monster kind of he's always says he's the strongest one there is and everything like that yeah but Thor by his very nature is also very cocky as well so it's it's a great little moment I think I to me it almost seems like Thor I don't know if he's heard Hulk speak this much Hulk may have learned how to use language better during his time as a gladiator on Sakaar but like the 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 concept of Hulk speaking like long form sentences seems to be amusing to Thor or Chris Hemsworth is breaking character. I don't know. Because we see Thor laugh <laughs> yeah. at, the, at the end. I mean, it's not like the Hulk was really there. How is he breaking character? Well, because uh, he's probably playing off of Mark Ru- Ruffalo, who's probably Screen sitting capture. there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. doing good, the, the motion capture. So, I don't know. It's a great trailer, though. Uh, is it better than the teaser? Probably not. But it's like really? still really good. I, I think I enjoyed maybe just the music of the of the teaser trailer. The music in this trailer I thought was really good. It was really interesting. It was almost like sci fi. Pretty. It was pretty cool. It was like eighties synthesizer. Yeah, yeah. Futuristic. Uh, I don't know. That, that's kind of that's psych- a great description. Psychedelic kind of. Kinda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be, it'll be a great movie. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. But I I definitely think that like if if you if this trailer didn't spoil anything. The Infinity War uh, that was shown in Hall H, that that trailer definitely did spoil something. Spoil what? The fact that you know Hulk or uh, Thor ends up like floating through space at the end of, of oh. Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah. I, it'll be interesting to see what happens, how Thor Ragnarok ends. It may not end well yeah, because right? okay, so uh, yeah, we'll get into the Infinity War trailer. Nice transition there. Um, I just ruined it. Shit. Uh, the, the, the trailer opens up with, uh, the guardians of the galaxy flying through space in the Milano. Not sure where they're headed, but, uh, uh, somewhere Star-Lord's dangerous. Like, yes. Somewhere dangerous. Cause Star Lord's like put on your main, mean faces and all of a sudden they like run into, they like run into Thor and he like slams against their windshield, like, like a bug on a, on a car. Right. <laughs> and rockets like, get ro- it off, get it off, wipe it off. <laughs> Gross. Get it off. His uh, reaction was actually priceless. I laughed out loud on that. But they pick him up almost kind of like, it's very, to me, it was very reminiscent of how in the comics, the Avengers first found Steve Rogers floating in the Arctic. They like, just kind of like find this character floating. They bring him in. He wakes up and kind of like, is like goes crazy. Like what's going on? And he says like, who the hell are you guys? And we, at this point, it almost seems like Thor is guiding them to earth. Yeah. He may know, again, we don't know how Thor Ragnarok ends, but it seems like my guess is that it may have to do something with the Soul Stone and with yeah. Thanos, and maybe Hell is working with Thanos and she gets him the Soul Stone, and that's the catalyst for why he's going to Earth, because he knows of Thanos' plan. I still think that uh, Heimdall is, has something to do with the Soul Stone. Um, yeah, I guess if you could... I, I like that theory that you had, or mentioned earlier. It, it was a my theory. It, it's... It's called the Thanos theory, where you take the first letter of, or, uh, you take Thanos' name, and it turns out that it's like an acronym for time, uh, no, what was it? I don't know, it's a, it's a shitty theory, Yeah. but it, it might be true. Is the H Heimdall? The H is Heimdall, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the N is like Nova, I want to say. What? Okay, that's a shitty theory. Yeah. I can't remember what, what all the different hints were. 
but it was like where you could find each stone or something. It's dumb. Anyway. <laughs> um, so uh, basically it, going through the trailer, it's, it's basically like everybody just like acting very like ominous. They know something's coming. We see Loki and he's holding the cosmic cube. Yeah. It, not in its gem form, but in its cube form. I'm like, and, I've seen that before. Oh, from the Avengers movie? Yeah. I think he's holding it up and he is like, he, he looks a little worried, but it looks like he's giving it up. As, I, didn't, I didn't see a worried look on his face. I saw a pretty low res because, of course, Marvel hasn't released this yet. Right. So I, I do you think he's still working for Thanos. I think he is. I think he's making good on, on the what promise. What an a-hole. <laughs> I think he's making good on the promise that he made to him back at, at, in the Avengers film that he would obtain the the space stone for him. <clears throat> so uh, I think he's, I think he knows that Thanos is not a force to be reckoned with, and that he better make good on that promise if he wants to stay alive. And I I still think that he's really playing the. Um, if you read the Infinity Gauntlet comics, Mephisto was like kind of like the servant to mm. Thanos. Yeah. I think Loki is going to play that Mephisto role where he's like the uh the ad- not the advisor but yeah kind of somewhat the yeah, advisor yeah. to thanos and how to use his power and yeah, stuff. loki kind of plays the mephisto role and hello plays the death role maybe yeah yeah it, it all kind of lines up pretty well that way if that's what happens we get a great shot of peter parker using his spider sense which um, we didn't really get to see in, in homecoming but it's depicted in a cool way he's sitting on the bus kind of with his head in his lap and all of a sudden like it's it's a close-up shot on his arm hair and the arm hair just sticks straight up and like and then like it kind of uh shifts focus to Peter's face, which all of a sudden is like, look, he looks really Surprised worried. and he turns around. Yeah, he's looking outside of his school bus. And man, wh- whoever sat in front of the person who filmed this leaked footage needs to calm the fuck down and just <laughs> sit sit, sit her ass down, his, his ass down. I don't know. But like, you got to be aware at all times if you're in Hall H that maybe somebody's recording something behind you. <laughs> and maybe you shouldn't yeah, be great. a dick. And let yeah, people right. see what you know. <laughs> let people see what's being leaked. I was actually surprised how many leaks came came out of this. Have some consideration for the people that didn't go there and want to see all this leaked footage. <laughs> you know, you know, kind of duck your, kind of do a turtle kind of head kind of thing. If you're at, if you get, if you listeners are ever at Hall H and Comic Con, <laughs> just just please for the rest of us who di- don't get to go because we're we're cheap and or <laughs> busy. But uh, so the, the the rest of the footage of the trailer, it doesn't look like it takes place on Earth. Like it's very like orangey. Yeah, yeah. Like, it looks like it might take place on Mars or There's something. There's like, like these that. like uh, like crystal, like giant crystal kind of shaped stones. Yeah, spiky kind of things. Yeah, kind of spiky looking things, and like a lot of moving background crystal. machinery type stuff. It looks yeah. very alien to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how they get there to that planet. It. It can't be Earth, though. I couldn't imagine it was Earth, because if it was, that means Thanos just crushed our moon. Yeah, it so, doesn't look like Earth. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's another planet. But everybody's there. Iron Man's there. Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy are there. Doctor Strange is there. And he does this cool shot where he's, uh, he's like, creating these, like, stepping discs for, for Star-Lord. Yeah. It's cool, like, little, like, team-up moment. And you wouldn't expect that of, like, people who, like, just started fighting together. Yeah. So maybe there was some kind of plan that was set up in motion or something like that. I don't know. We do get to see Spider-Man's, <clears throat> like, uh, this the suit that was teased at the end of Spider-Man Homecoming. Yes. Yeah, he dons that for this, the, the Ben Riley slash uh, Iron Spider spider yeah. suit. Yeah. He does don that for this uh, fight, it looks like. Um, it which looks- is almost like an homage to, like, the Secret Wars where he, you know, guys a Venom costume. It's just, like, this upgraded suit he gets for this, like, cosmic battle yeah it'll be interesting if it has a whole bunch of extra features like maybe like the arms that'd that, be cool that come out the back i've always liked those like i wish that was like a mainstay a part of his suit it was for the superior spider-man he had those i really liked this superior spider not gonna lie he should have he should have kept a lot of that stuff yeah. that dr yeah. octopus invented like the spider drones and yeah yeah and all that stuff it was it was it was a good concept um we see so we know loki gives uh, Thanos the space stone because um, we see Thanos open up a portal that's glowing blue yeah. like how the space stone portals do like mm-hmm. how like the big one in space that was in or in the sky in the Avengers movie it looks like that he steps through it onto this planet and he has a pretty cool line where he's like you know fun isn't one something usually considers when balancing the universe but this does bring a smile to my face I didn't like that line you don't you're just a hater 
You're just I, a heater. I don't know. Stop it hating. Like, I, it didn't. It wasn't like that. I, I know Thanos is has always sort of been like this villain where he like you know he's evil, but he always like has like this evil kind of smile on his face. He's an eloquent evil guy. I guess, but like I don't know. There's something I don't know. It's not menacing. I don't know if it's just Brolin's voice or just the line. Or maybe it's just his look. I hate Thanos' look in this, I'm going to be honest. I wish he still had the headgear. I, like, I don't... When I think of Thanos, like, I think of the cover to Infinity Gauntlet. Like, you don't see his eyes. They're just, like, shrouded in shadow. But you just see, like, this, like, twinkle, you know? And it's yeah. just, like, evil. I hate the fact that I could see, like... He just like looks like this big, fat, purple baby. <laughs> looks like a purple Hulk, you know? Like a bald, purple Hulk. It just, I mean, and I guess Hulk could be menacing, but th- this Thanos just does, it's not doing it for me. Ideally, he should be in his armor. I would agree with that because that's c- part of his iconic look. Yeah. Um, I've seen him a lot in the comics without it. Like, I think he spent most of the Infinity <laughs> War, or I'm sorry, uh, Annihilation yeah. Um, without the armor. Mm-hmm. And he was bald like this. The rationalization that the Russos gave was that, you know, when you're, you have an all-powerful glove, you don't need armor anymore. And that's, that's which, who gives a shit? If, if I had an all-powerful glove, I would fashion myself the crudest, most badass-looking piece of armor ever, you know? And, like, I remember... I would, I would just fly around naked. I'd pull a Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would I'd be like, look, I'm naked, and yeah, I can still kick your ass. Just dick yeah. slap everyone. <laughs> just dick slap everyone. Um, I'm, I'm really glad that, that Thanos <laughs> didn't pull, you know, being all-powerful. Because, like, the whole rationalization for Dr. Manhattan and Watchmen going naked all the time is because he's beyond the need for clothes. You yeah, know? It, yeah. He doesn't care, basically. He's so powerful. He Does God wear shit. clothes? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like, Thanos, he gets this God power. And, you know, he still decides to keep some clothes, you know? But it's maybe along <laughs> the same lines. I'm really glad we don't see Thanos' floppy dong. Jeez. Uh, um, thank God. Uh, you know, when I think of bald, that's so gross. It's probably like I, wrinkly. I that. It's probably wrinkly. Oh, God. Like Shut his chin. Up. Like his chin. <laughs> oh, my fucking God. <laughs> uh, sorry. Oh. Wow. Sorry about We went that. there. We went there. Uh, <laughs> no, I was going to say, like, when I think of bald Thanos, I think, like, <laughs> of at the end of Infinity Gauntlet, which this is probably a spoiler, you know, when he's like, uh, when Adam Warlock, like, jumps into the future and, like, Thanos is, like, a farmer. Yeah. Like, he's, he's like, very meek. He, it's, it's a very, like, humbled form of him. Very humbled, like, uh, visualization of Thanos. And, you know, I to me, when I when I think of Thanos like that, I think of him in his humbled form when he's not in, his, like, his warlord kind of armor. And this is what I see when I see that. It's just, I don't like it. Mm-hmm. It, it bothers me. Yeah. Well, too bad. Yeah, I, I guess. I to tell you, man. I guess. Uh, we, all, all I can say is, is Dark Side is going to look way more fucking intimidating on screen. He's going to look like you a see big Steppenwolf, you gray see Steppenwolf, baby. It's like, holy shit. And you compare Steppenwolf to Thanos, it's like not even a contest. If you say so, man, we'll see. If they ever get around there. If the DCEU is even around by that point. <laughs> it will be. So we see a, a lot more extra shots, uh, just, just random shots. We see uh, Winter Soldier... I guess it looks like he's fighting with Black Panther's army. We see Proxima Midnight throw her spear at Captain America. And Who's he like, bearded now, which... Yeah, Captain America. Yeah. yeah. Well, it makes sense because in the Civil War comic, when they were on the run, when they were hiding from this, um, the government, basically, they all wore disguises. Um, uh-huh. Some dyed their hair. They all went under different names as civilians. Uh, they got new identities, essentially. Uh-huh given to them by Nick Fury. So they're kind of like witness protection program kind of mode here. So yeah, Chris Evans has longer hair and a beard. Black Widow has like platinum blonde hair. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it but seems like everybody's different now though. Does like, Ant-Man yeah. take place before Infinity Gauntlet or after? You mean Ant-Man and the Wasp? Yeah, Ant-Man and the Wasp. <laughs> I don't know, man. Good question. But anyway, Proxima Midnight throws her staff at Captain America and he catches it. He like goes to the side and like catches it midair. Um, we see Scarlet Witch protecting Vision, it looks like, and we, they, they purposefully hide yeah, his the Mind gem. Stone. Oh, the, the, that's right, the Mind Stone. The Mind I'm Stone. I'm Soul Gem, but the Mind Stone. Yeah, from his forehead. So we still don't know, you know, I will, yeah, we know that they take it away from him, but we don't know if he's still alive when they do that. Yeah, does that shut down the, he's I, an android. I don't so. think it would, but he has a, a, a synthetic brain, you know. Maybe he just loses his power? Maybe he loses his power. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Um, 
there, there's a cool shot of, uh, and I can't remember the name of these alien creatures, but they're they're almost like if you cross a xenomorph alien from the the alien franchise mm-hmm. with like like a, a panther kind of thing. Um, hmm. They're pretty cool. They're like the these drones that Corvus Glaive sends out to try to like. They're like his his own little personal army. The brood. No, they're not the brood. I guess those are X Men. They're kind of they're kind of similar in their function. They're like they're like uh, hound dogs. They could like sniff out and seek things, mm-hmm. and, but they could also fight. We see Black Panther fighting like one of them. I think they he like get released on Earth, and that's kind of like Black Panther's job is to take care of those creatures. Yeah. Um, we get to see Winter Soldier again. Like, yeah, I already said that. Right next, I wasn't yeah. listening yeah. to you. Right next to the Black Panther <laughs> scene, uh, we see uh, the Hulkbuster. Hulkbuster makes a return. Um, that's uh, right. That was there's a cool shot of the Falcon, uh, fighting Proxima Midnight in this. He does like this kind of like bicycle kick, bicycle kick kind of thing. That's a pretty cool shot too. At first I couldn't quite tell who that was, but yeah, it's, it's Falcon. Um, Thanos is like crushing Thor's head. It looks really painful. Uh, there, there's just, uh, just a bunch of other fight shots. Uh, Iron Man's armor looks really cool. Um, and the, the big, I guess, money shot, uh, final money shot of this is when Thanos crushes a moon in the background or some kind of satellite or some kind of, some kind of structure. It may not be as distant as a moon. It's kind of spherical in shape, but it, when he crushes, it's like glowing. yeah, it glows. Like he crushes it and it like explodes with glowing energy kind of thing. And then like he hurls these like glowing fiery bits down kind of, yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie when I first, cause this footage is from D 23, right? Before they debuted at comic con. When I first heard that scene, it looked, sounded so cool. Well, the, but yeah. I pictured it being so much cooler than it. The way I imagined it, the way was. the description went was that I, I thought it was like a moon in the background. And when he crushes it, you like, see the moon explode. Like, yeah. You kind of not, not explode, but like crumble kind of like, uh-huh. like a crack and then like break. And then yeah. he hurls those like rocks. At the heroes, game. yeah, that's what I figured. I didn't know it was gonna be like this glowing, vague kind of thing. Yeah. It all but, happens like really quick. Like it, when I pictured it, it was like much more dramatic. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Again, there was like you know like a, like a shock wave emanating from the, sort of like when the Death Star blows up. You can see that shock wave. I don't know. Yeah, it just looked way cooler. Is all I know. That being said, this is pretty low res. This this leaked trailer. Yeah. So, um. What, one of the things that was also revealed in D23, we mentioned this briefly in our last episode, it hadn't quite been revealed yet, but I was suspecting, um, it is confirmed that the Black Order are going to be Thanos' henchmen in this film. Yeah. Um, they are missing someone, though. They don't have Supergiant in there, but they, they who's the telepath. But they do have Corvus Glaive, who, uh, who's like the, the evil, badass right-hand man. They have Proxima Midnight, who's the badass fighter. Um... They have Ebony Ma, who's like the the conniving, uh, like super intelligent kind of guy, and they have uh, Black Dwarf in this film, who's like the Hulk. He's like a brute, but they're not calling him Black Dwarf in this. Uh, they're calling him uh, uh, um, Cull Obsidian, which is actually the name of the full group. That's probably better. Yeah, because Black Dwarf is was not the best name. No. It kind of makes him sound like an African American little person. Yeah. Uh, so I like the name Call Obsidian for him, and just call him the group, the Black Order. It, it works. It works. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I guess. Let's I, move on. <laughs> I don't really care about those guys. I don't know. No, they're really cool. They'll they'll be really cool. Although if Falcon can go hand to hand with Proxima Midnight, maybe she's not quite as powerful as she should be. But right. but then again, you do need to put some kind of cap on their power. They can't be as powerful as Thanos. You know. Yeah. I, I definitely think that, you know, just because based on the trailer, you know, we see him holding the gauntlet, but there's only, like, one stone on it, the space stone. Um, or what was it? Yeah, it was the space stone. Um, I definitely think this film is him gathering the gemstones and then everyone else trying to prevent that. But then at the end, he probably collects all of them, and then, boom, you know, he you're setting up the, the sequel. You think? Because, you know, they're shooting them back-to-back. Yeah. So, I, I think... I think this one was Infinity War, and then the second film was probably Infinity Gauntlet or something like that. We'll see. It's it, it's still unclear, but we'll see. Yeah. All right, moving on. Um, so Warner Brothers 
kicked off their DC section of, of their panel with a shit ton of logos, I guess. Um, and some some news has come out for for uh, some of them, and some of them are really all we have right now is, is just the logo, but there was uh, Shazam, there was The Batman, uh, Suicide Squad 2, Wonder Woman 2, um, and Flashpoint, which, holy crap. Um, but let's <laughs> that, start. That, with, was, that was probably the Shazam and the Flashpoint movies were probably the biggest surprises for me. Yeah, everything yeah. else I was, you know, you already know. I agree. Uh, so we found out that Shazam. Actually, this was announced like I think bef- the day before Warner Brothers was, uh, Warner Brothers panel in Hall <laughs> Age. Um, the fact that Shazam is their next uh, DC film to go into, pr- into production. Um, I guess it's confirmed to shoot in February of next year. Uh, for a uh, April April fifth twenty nineteen release, mm-hmm. uh, and I guess The Rock is not going to be a, a part of the film, which think, I think was yes okay the so biggest surprise from that. They were always like at first we were supposed to get a Shazam film and The Rock was going to be Black Adam, yeah, assumed to be the villain in that film, and then they were like, oh no, we're gonna do a standalone Black Adam film and it's going to come out earlier than Shazam, and that 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 news I. Lost my shit. I was like, no, <laughs> you can't do that. And it looks like they maybe listened to me and have corrected the course in that they are not doing the Black Adam film maybe at all, but at least not anytime soon. And they're doing the Shazam film. Yeah, there was no, I mean, there's no logo for the Black Adam film. Right. So I definitely think it's, it's, it's you know, it, I think these films will take us through like maybe 2021. Yeah. So I definitely think like something like a Black Adam film would would definitely come after that. It'd definitely come later. Yeah. Um, I it, we did get a director uh, out of this. It's it's David F. Sandberg. He's done a lot of horror films. Yeah. He did Lights Out, which was uh, actually I didn't see it, but my wife said it was really good. Yeah, and, and you know I he I did Annabelle or something. I think we mentioned this in the in in the podcast before, but like I I, I really like the idea of of horror directors sort of like stepping into like the, you know, superhero kind of fantasy realm. I think, um, just, you know, to make a really good horror film, you have to have really good timing, I think. And I think a lot, you know, comic books, comic book panels are all about timing. Yeah. In a sense. And they deal with a lot of special effects too. I think Scott Derrickson, who was a, you know, um, Primarily a horror director did yeah. a great job on Doctor Strange. And, you know, you look at Sam Raimi, you look at Peter Jackson. You know, they oh. all had their start in horror. So yeah, um, that's it's it's, it's it, I I'm not familiar with that. I haven't seen anything, but it's not the worst news to me. Um, I'm I hope, looking forward to it. I hope that um, I think I saw some panels. I never read the Superman Shazam uh, arc. But there was a great panel in there where Superman was concerned that Shazam had given the power to a boy. And so Shazam asks him to be his mentor. Um, so it would be cool to see Superman play a cameo and show him like really inspiring young Billy Batson, who I guess in this movie yeah. is going to be uh, handicapped in some way, I guess. I haven't heard that. Yeah, I think that's what the director said. He's not just going to be young. He's also going to be handicapped. Who And he's going to turn into a superhero. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Because it, it, Billy Batson is a handicap, but his friend is uh, Freddie. I forget oh, his last name. Captain Marvel Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, so that's... I haven't heard that. Yeah. That's interesting. Yep. Um, and, you know, there was always the rumor that Henry Cavill was going to appear in the Shazam movie, or that is a rumor. So I wouldn't be surprised maybe if they went that route. Um, since one of the films not on this list that they announced was Man of Steel 2, which was kind of disappointing to me, honestly. Yeah, they still... Might need to be lining up the talent for that. I'm still hoping that Matthew Vaughn does it. He'd be he's, he, he's said that he wants to. I think So give it to him. Right. What the fuck are you doing? Just hand it over. Announce it. Start production now. <laughs> I want to see it. <laughs> um, I can't, it kind of seems like they have a plan, maybe, going forward. So Yeah, it seems like it. Um, so no casting news which i was really surprised across all of the dc properties that they announced yeah i, I was really you know i i wanted dc i wanted to say that dc was gonna win this comic-con again but i think the trailer honestly, alone doesn't yeah, cut it the trailer alone doesn't cut it. i have to give it to and even the aquaman footage alone doesn't cut it i have to give it to marvel on this one just if they would have announced maybe who was playing shazam maybe 
Like, I would have been like, oh, they tied or something like that. But yeah. there was no casting news, which is really kind of dis- disappointing, honestly. I would have killed for some Green Lantern casting. Some Green Lantern casting, some Shazam casting. Um, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, a Suicide 2 story concept or something like that. I heard the guy from the Mo- uh, Moonlight movie. Yeah. The movie that won the Oscar. Yeah. Uh, I heard he was in talks to be... Hal Jordan. Hal, or not Hal uh, Jordan, uh, John Stewart. Yeah. That's been around uh, for a while, that rumor. That'd be cool. I hope it's him. Yeah, that would be... It's great casting. Um, anyway, the it Batman. Would be, it would be great casting. But, uh, so yeah, the next film, uh, The Batman, and this is in no part- particular order. Um, this is definitely not the order that they announced the, the showed the, the logos in, but uh, one of the biggest news, you know, to come out of, of their panel was, you know, Ben Affleck setting the record pretty much straight that... He doesn't he, want to play Batman. He, yeah, well, he Not, wants to play Batman. It wasn't necessarily that he is going to. We, like, it's still unclear. Well, it's it's. It, I don't understand how it's it was still unclear because you know there was this big news drop the day before by the Hollywood Reporter saying, "Oh, Warner Brothers wants to phase him out, and you know he may not be." Uh, Matt, uh, not Matthew Vaughn. Um, Matt, Matt Reeves. Matt Reeves, uh, Batman. But the thing is, like in late June, like not even that long ago. Matt Reeves told, who was it? Was it MTV? I can't remember. He was like, no, I, Ben Affleck is my Batman. And then for this news to drop, and it's just, okay. So Charles Roven, one of the producers, says Ben Affleck is, is the Batman. You know. Ben Affleck says he's Batman. Ben Affleck says he's Batman. The director says he's Batman. He's Batman. He's fucking Batman. Cut it with the drama. Seriously. People. Seriously. It's freaking annoying. Hollywood Reporter specifically. <laughs> Uh, in specific i don't know it's it's kind of ridiculous but it was it was nice to hear ben affleck say you know that this is like the best role ever because yeah. i agree if i could be batman that'd be dope i want to be batman eh. well fuck you i told eh. you batman. i'd rather be captain america uh, no. that's just no, no 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 batman <laughs> batman is the role and he gets yeah. to be it and he's super excited for it yeah. and he loves playing the character and yeah. and he loves matt reeves too you know he said he would be a a, a monkey rolling on the ground in you know in a in the background for a matt reeves film yeah so so well, that's really encouraging really encouraging one of the other news items was that wonder woman 2 got a release date for december 13th of 2019 yeah so if that's happening in december and and Shazam is coming out in April earlier that year. DC still has two spots to fill, which is June fourteenth of twenty nineteen and November first of twenty nineteen. Now November yeah. seems a little bit close to Wonder Woman's release, so they might drop that. If I had to guess when the Batman's going to come out, I bet you they're going to release it on in summer of twenty nineteen. You think? Ideally, it seems the far furthest along out of any of the other properties that we haven't already discussed. You know, honestly, I I wouldn't be surprised if it was something like. Justice League Dark because that really? film I think has has been like pretty pretty well cooked for a long time because you know uh, I, with Guillermo del Toro writing the script and everything and uh, it, it, I feel like it, it's it's been ready to go they just you know haven't found good timing for it yet I would release the Batman in the middle of summer on June fourteenth twenty nineteen and I would put Justice League Dark on November 1st because that's kind of close to Halloween yeah. so you could really promote th- that type of movie during the Halloween month true you know, I haven't mentioned I didn't think I mentioned Justice League Dark did I mention Justice League Dark no you yet? haven't yet um okay it's anyway just, it was so, announced <laughs> some of the other logos were Suicide Squad 2 of course Justice League Dark Batgirl and Green Lantern Corps yeah um whoops <laughs> um, what was the other one what was the other one uh uh Flashpoint yep yeah Okay. That was that was a shock. That is huge. like at, at first when I first heard it, I'm like, "What the fuck are you guys doing? You're like, are you gonna reboot the universe already? No, I, like, why don't you? And also, why don't you just call it the Flash? I never, I never thought that. Okay, so he, he, here's here's what I thought when when I first heard about this. I think that they've been trying really hard to get a good Flash story. They've gone through multiple directors, you know, multiple stories. And I think honestly, it makes sense that the first story you tell with the Flash in his own solo movie is the story of him going back in time to try and save his mother, which that, is the Flashpoint story. That makes sense, because if you do that in a sequel, you you would kind of be like, well, why didn't he try to save his mom before? Right, exactly. Yeah. And I really think that the reason they're not calling this film The Flash is because it's not really going to be, in my opinion, a Flash film. I think you could almost consider this just like a Justice League 1.5, but like... Like an Elseworlds. alternate, yeah, like Elseworlds, like an yeah. alternate kind of reality. Um, you know, we, we've had Jeffrey Dean Morgan, like, and Lauren Karn, like, tease, put teases on Twitter about them, like, 
playing Batman they're and the aware, Joker. They are aware of Flashpoint. They're aware of what that means for their characters. The fact that Thomas Wayne becomes Batman, Bruce Wayne dies, and and Martha Wayne becomes the Joker from her grief, yeah. which is such an awesome concept. Yeah. Flashpoint is such a great story. I think Newsrama, actually, the, the Newsrama is a comic book news website. They recently put out a list of like their top ten animated um uh, films and Flashpoint, I think was like number two, right after uh, Mask of the Phantasm. So it's it's like it's a it's a really really interesting story. Mm-hmm. You, you know, Cyborg plays a good role in there, and it's always been rumored that Cyborg was gonna like play a, a role in the Flash film. Yeah. So there you go. You gonna bring Gal Gadot back? So and- essentially, you're saying Flashpoint is like Justice League one point five starring the Flash. Yeah, exactly. It's sort of like. He's the perspective character, uh, yeah. but we still get get to have characters like, you know, Aquaman fighting Wonder Woman, you know, and you know, Thomas Wayne as Batman and Cyborg. It's gonna be awesome. What happens to Superman in Flashpoint? Oh, jeez. Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Uh, I don't <laughs> honestly. I don't remember. Gosh, why don't I remember? I forget. But Where'd you go, man. Where'd I know. I suck. <laughs> well, you can always Google it if you don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'll Google it right now. Gosh, <laughs> dang it. How do I fill the dead air, though, while you're doing go, this? Go, just go. So, okay, random. okay. so uh, I guess the Atlanteans uh, fight the Themyscirians in the Flashpoint right. storyline, so that's why you said that they'll be fighting against each other. Uh, I think I think this whole concept sounds amazing to me. At first, I was totally not on board, but then you started talking to me about it, and I'm like... Okay, that actually, that does make sense for the first Flash film. It, I think it could totally work in much the same way that Captain America was, like, Civil War, the Captain America Civil War film, that was, like, Avengers 2.5. It was essentially, yeah, Avengers 2.5 starring Captain America. I think this could work as Justice League 1.5 starring The Flash. It works, I think. This is super interesting. Okay, okay. so in Flashpoint, uh, the ship lands in Metropolis, and, like, causes this huge explosion the kryptonian ship yeah the kryptonian ship and uh the government sort of like takes him in and, and creates him as like a super sort of like uh supreme power what they did with hyperion oh, okay it seems like a lot like that oh, like, so it becomes exactly like, a, like that a government almost. puppet yeah okay yeah see this all sounds pretty interesting sounds fucking as awesome. long as like he realizes at the end like oh i shouldn't have gone and messed with time and then he goes back and he like restores the timeline to its natural yeah. state by the end of that film and you know honestly like if if they wanted to like sort of like restructure or like fix something that they felt was off at the time like maybe like batman killing or something like that yeah. they could do it with this like or really Superman easily killing. <laughs> yeah well yeah. maybe i don't know that's that's it sounds kind of brilliant i'm totally on board with it yeah. I totally, I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's going to be the best movie that's ever been made. I'm already overhyped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, hopefully it turns out that way, and, and hopefully we're not just, like, you know, getting all our expectations oh, so yeah, high. yeah, I know. This is all conjecture. It'll be disappointing if it doesn't turn out this way, honestly, now, yeah. that, now that you've been talking about it. I know. So, yeah. Anyway. Um. So, yeah, so besides Man of Steel, the other films that, interestingly, were not mentioned or shown during the panel was uh nightwing which already has a director which but it makes sense i I always said don't make the nightwing film just put them in the batgirl film which they should do yeah maybe they will uh gotham city sirens good which i've heard rumors you know back and forth as to whether or not that's even being made anymore you you do realize if you go back to like one of our earlier episodes we you and i made a 50 dollar bet i said that green lantern Corps was going to come out before gotham city sirens oh fuck you said otherwise I think this is looking more and more like you owe me fifty bucks. No, no, but but Suicide Squad two kind of doesn't. No, like, fuck no, you. no. I mean, it's um, not official yet. Like they don't have dates. Once they have dates, you owe me fifty bucks. But I, I haven't forgotten about that. <laughs> uh, the Cyborg film that was, you know, I think it was in last year's Comic Con or oh, yeah, the year and before. It wasn't announced in this one. Yeah. No, yeah, it was, and then uh, you know, Justice League two either. That was, Justice League was supposed to be like a two part film, like shot back to back. Um, no word of that. So that's because they already have Flashpoint. Yeah, I that that's that's my guess. Yeah. Um. But so yeah, you know, it's it's kind of interesting to see some of the films that have been confirmed again with directors. Like I think Nightwing honestly is the biggest surprise that was not even mentioned. 
Yeah. Um, but the others, I, I guess, Man of Steel 2, maybe, as well. But That was a big know. surprise for me, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's all. They that's, have somewhat of a plan. I, I'm excited by a lot of this, honestly, especially the Shazam and the Flashpoint news. Uh, ben Affleck's comments about the Batman were, were good. And, yeah, we're getting a Wonder Woman 2. That's cool. Yeah. I'd rather have a Man of Steel 2 before a Wonder Woman 2, but... Yeah, Wonder Woman. You gotta go where the money is. I'm, I'm not surprised that Wonder Woman was was announced uh, so soon after because it's it's been a huge success. You want to keep that momentum going. I heard Warner Brothers actually is giving going to do like a big Oscar push for best picture, best director. That's a Wonder horrible Woman. idea. <laughs> That's a horrible idea. Why? There's no way it's gonna win or even be considered for best picture. I'm it sure was, you would have said the same thing about Suicide Squad. Not that it was nominated. That for was best nominated picture, for, for makeup. makeup. If you yeah. ask me, do you think? Suicide Squad could win for makeup, I'd be like, yeah, sure. But if you ask me, if can Wonder Woman win for best picture? I tell you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> There's what, no way. What about best director? Uh, no, no, not even for, for best director. I would consider Logan for best picture over Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah, I would too. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> fuck off. I, uh, I could dream. Don't crush my dreams. It's not going to happen. The Academy is afraid of superhero films. Or, yeah. Or at yeah. least they don't like them. Uh, yeah. All right. So speaking of uh, female-led uh, superhero films, Captain Marvel concept art was released. Um, we got our first look at the Skrulls. Which and blew Captain, my mind. Captain Marvel fighting the Skrulls. It's been... Like, I was wondering... I always thought maybe that the Skrulls were owned by Fox, but and then, like, Kevin Feige, Feige came out and said... They don't. They own specific characters, but not necessarily races, races. of things. So, which I, I feel like that's a new thing. Because why not use the scrolls as in in the Avengers film as the Chitari was? It, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe they wanted to save the scrolls for something a little bit more important, like the Kree Scroll War, which it looks like this is adapting. The Kree Scroll. I think War. this is because ad- I don't. I think this is adapting Secret Invasion. No, I think it's setting up Secret Invasion, but it's adapting the Kree Scroll War oh, because yeah, you're uh, right. Carol Danvers gets her powers from the through, from through the, the Kree. Kree. Yeah, through the Kree. Well, it was a Kree. And this villain, film but... takes place in the '90s too. They announced that's interesting. Which See, that didn't really rub me the right way because yeah. I, I was like, why is that necessary? They must have some kind of game plan in mind. It, there must be need. There need to needs to be some kind of reason why this needs to happen before the events of Iron Man. I think really it's Secret Invasion. Um, it's possible. Um, so. The big question that it raises for me is that if this movie takes place in the 90s and Kevin Feige was talking about how, how, you know, we'll see how Nick Fury loses one of his eyes. You know, he'll have two eyes in this movie and lose it. Um, the big question that it raises for me sitting in the 90s is that when she eventually joins up with the rest of the Avengers in the in the present, t- in the present time, how are they going to explain the fact that she doesn't age? Are they going to explain it that, like, she's... She doesn't age like Wonder Woman, or are they gonna? Is it gonna be some kind of time travel kind of thing? Is it gonna be some kind of like interstellar gravity kind of time warp thing? <laughs> is it gonna be uh, I don't know some kind of stasis like time stasis kind of pod or whatever? I don't know. There's so many different ways they could do it, but none of them seem quite necessary. I guess I don't know the story, but yeah. It's it's just a weird to make it a, a period piece. Maybe they, they need to not have some kind of technology that we have presently or something. I don't know. I couldn't tell you, man. All I know is that the scrolls are going to be in it. She's going to be fighting the scrolls. Her costume looks badass. It looks exactly like how it should. Yeah. yeah. And the scrolls look exactly how they should. I, I'm, I'm super excited for this. Let's talk about Secret Invasion. Who's a scroll and who's not? Black Widow's a scroll. Are they setting this up in the 90s to set up the idea that, that scrolls have been involved in some capacity with Earth since the 90s, since a decade prior to, to the Iron Man movie. It's possible. That being said, are they ballsy enough to make any of the main characters scrolls and do the Secret Invasion story? I always thought that Secret Invasion would be a good uh, follow-up to to the Infinity Gauntlet. I, initially, I don't know, and I don't know if I ever mentioned this on the podcast, but uh, like before... I you know I consider the fact that maybe Marvel could possibly regain Fantastic Four for Phase Four. I always thought Secret Invasion would be a, a logical be, kind of. It would be ideal to get the Fantastic Four. You know, have the Super Scroll as a bad guy, set up Secret Invasion, have that all going during Phase Four. That's your Phase Four right there. Um, but obviously, they don't have the Fantastic Four back. 
Yeah, we'll no. get into that later. Yeah. But, okay, so I don't think that any of the main characters, anybody who's ever headlined a film, so yeah. I don't think any of them could possibly be Skrulls. Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor. Yeah, none of those guys I don't think could be Thor's. Potential candidates for, for Skrulls could be, like, maybe Black Widow or Hawkeye. I'm pretty confident Black Widow is one. I'm pretty confident. <laughs> what? Uh, you can't be confident. I'm pretty confident. <laughs> uh <laughs> And, and Nick Fury, I think, is also one. I think no. if Hawkeye isn't one, then his wife is. Or his um, children. I think Hank Pym is probably a Skrull. Maybe Scarlet Witch could be, or uh, Quicksilver. I don't know. I, I think Ant-Man's like, Russian tech buddy is probably a Skrull. Um, yeah, any supporting characters, I think, are fair game. Yeah, yeah. I think like Agent Coulson is a Skrull. I really think Gwyneth Pal- Paltrow is a Skrull. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like... That, that one I'm 100% on. I would love to see John Favreau as a scroll. Like, they're going to get married, and then they're gonna be, it's going to be the wedding yeah. night, and then all of a sudden, scroll. Yeah. Scroll vagina. No! <laughs> Jesus, we're, ta- we're talking about the Thanos. Is- <laughs> that's all you. That's all. That's on you. I'm sorry, guys. I'll stop. No more No more of that. Um, yeah, but any, any, any of those supporting characters, I think, are fair game. Um, I, I'm excited for... The not only the fact that she's battling the scrolls, which I think make wonderful villains, uh, I'm excited for the Kree's scroll war storyline. I think that's a great story for for Kenta Marvel to kind of combine all. It kind of wraps everything up in a nice package, and the fact that it may set up Secret Invasion later down the road. It's all good things. Is Secret Invasion okay? So if, it's I mean, amazing how much like you can extrapolate from just this these few pieces of concept art. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, so if, if all of, like, the first three phases of, of Marvel was, I guess, Infinity, the, the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, maybe. Setting up, yeah. Yeah. What is, what, what is, what are the scrolls setting up? Secret Invasion, I guess, but, like, that, what does that lead to? Mm, that's a good question. They may not have, like, a, a story arc that, like, goes through that lasts through three phases anymore. Mm-hmm. It may just be like a phase that uh, deals with one storyline. Actually, I didn't, wasn't there an article or like an interview recently where Kevin uh, Feige, I keep wanting to say Feige. It's so hard <laughs> for me not to do that. Kevin Feige was like, like after Infinity Gauntlet, like they may not have like phases or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. He also said that. Yeah. So that's probably going to be the case. I would yeah. guess. Not not as much l- long game playing because I think they learned their lesson with contracts and how you need to like really get them for like more than three films, you know. Yeah. And that the actors may balk at that. You never know. I don't know. Yeah. So, anyway, cool news. There were uh, also in the Marvel panel. Um, they had some casting news. We you and I have been going back and forth on who we thought would play Janet Van Dyne. I thought it was Sharon Stone. Like, we, thought, we thought it was me, Catherine Zeta Jones. We thought it was me, Sharon Stone. A whole bunch of people. Turns out it's going to be Michelle Pfeiffer. Which is super heartbreaking to me. Yeah, we got it's Michael like, Keaton. Catwoman, no! We got Michael Keaton, we got Michelle Pfeiffer. He's got Batman. We're coming for Gal Gadot next. No. What? <laughs> no, how dare you? <laughs> Not going to happen. Um, Lawrence Fishburne was cast as Bill Foster. Perry White. Yeah, we took Perry White from you. Damn it. Sucka. Um, that's really exciting news to me. I've always liked Goliath as a, uh, as a character. Um, he, in the comics, if you don't know who Bill Foster is from the comics, um, he was an assistant to Hank Pym, um, who kind of assisted him when Hank was working on the giant man serum. Like there was a point where he was like stuck at like two stories tall. So he had to have his assistant, uh, Bill Foster help him out with it. And Bill Foster actually memorized the formula for the Pym particles and became his own superhero on the side himself. And, uh, I don't know if he'll necessarily be a superhero, in Ant Man and the Wasp, he's kind of older. Yeah, he's he's you know he's a little bit older, like uh, not Michael Douglas's age, but uh, is he? I don't know. I don't think I, so. I don't know. But he he he's about the age where he could yeah he could he'll most likely play Hank Pym's assistant in this. Maybe someone who can help him and Scott out with the whole Giant Man formula thing. So that's pretty cool. I, Even and though it I, seems like they pretty much have it worked out. Yeah. With Civil War, I don't know. You never know. You know, one, one never knows. I mean, there were some, like, if you look at the footage description, there were some, like, funny little snippets where, uh, like, Iron uh, Ant-Man is, like, described as, like, two feet tall, like, running, like, next to his daughter or something like that. 
Um, but there's also like a lot of cool things where like, I guess it's like a van that's driving high speed through traffic. And then like the van shrinks, goes underneath the wheels of another car and then like grows back, you know, they're doing so much cool things with like growth and shrinking. Uh These are uh, cool powers. Yeah. Cool powers. Just cool. I actually didn't read anything about like any footage that came out from Ant-Man or Black Panther or... I mean, there wasn't much. There was, like, th- there were some descriptions from Screen Rant, but they didn't go into tremendous detail. Uh-huh. Um, so, like... Just off topic, did you read about the Aquaman footage description? No, no. That was, uh, like, two old men were fishing. Just real quick, two old men were fishing. They, they're, like, the hook catches something, like, then it kind of shifts to, like, a different view where you see that they're hook like was connected like this huge ass atlantean ship and there's like just a whole entire fleet <laughs> that's cool. of atlantean ships that sounds like the the trailer to the godzilla movie that was in the 90s where the oh, fisherman yeah. caught godzilla yeah mm-hmm. um but then i guess like aquaman i don't i think he's on on one of the ships and he's like i don't know something along the lines of like come at me bro or something like that or really? something wow that's pretty cool it's definitely not that line but it's something along <laughs> those lines uh, going back to Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, Hannah John Kamen was cast as Ghost, who is likely going to be the villain of the piece. Uh, that was weird. My my first reaction to that was a little bit confused because I've always known Ghost as an Iron Man villain, and not as an Ant-Man villain, but essentially Ghost is um, uh, it's a suit of armor that makes you intangible. Kind of makes you like the Vision kind of, but she has like exp- uh, he has explosives. I guess in this movie they're, they're making it a she. Um, but, uh, but like, she, she's not just like intangible. She like, she could go anywhere, including in the, in the digital realm. Like she could hack anything and whatever. Right. So, hmm. or he in the comics, but I'm guessing she for this movie. So, it, I mean, it's, it's a, it's an interesting, um, I'm, villain. I'm, like ha- how does a, a person who could shrink fight a person who can go intangible? intangible. Yeah. I'm actually honestly not surprised that they're ripping off one of, not ripping off. That's the wrong word taking one of Iron Man's villains just because like, does Ant-Man have like a repertoire of villains? He borrows from a lot of other guys like Stiltman uh, and uh, I mean he has Egghead. He has like his Egghead own rogues. Is, a, is an Ant-Man bad guy. Rogues gallery. Ultron I kind of consider an Ant-Man bad guy but they kind of changed that up with the whole you know creation thing. Oh. Who he was MCU. created by. Yeah. 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 So a Ghost works for me. I think I think it's an interesting choice. I uh, Especially, you know, the different power sets playing off each other. It'll be cool. I'm looking forward to that movie. I'm looking forward to everything. I, I gotta stop saying that because it's so fucking redundant. <laughs> uh, oh, Walt By Goggins. default. By Walt, default. Walt Goggins is also in the film and he's gonna play the chairman of Cross Technologies. I'm guessing he's gonna be the one that, like, kind of, like, the shady businessman who, who takes over from uh, Darren Cross and kind of finances the new ghost uh, weapon. Yeah. So he's, he's, he always plays like kind of like asshole kind of hey, he's, character. He's a great actor. I, I like him. He's funny. All right. Um, moving on to the last bit of movie news that we have kind of segueing into television news, uh, at the Legion at the 20th century Fox panel, um, with Legion, uh, Noah Hawley, who is the showrunner of Legion announced that he is working on a movie uh, called Doctor Doom. Which, what the F? Yeah, I was not happy about it when I heard it because, again, ideally, you want to see these characters interacting with the rest of the Marvel Universe. Um, I do think that the movie could be good, especially under his helm, because he he does a lot of great work. Um, and Doctor Doom kind of has this whole kind of, like, Iron Man mixed with Doctor Strange, mixed with Black Panther kind of vibe thing going on. Like, it could be epic. Um, But I think it needs to be developed concurrently with a Fantastic Four franchise. Because, uh, honestly, honestly, if you ask me, can you have a Fantastic Four origin story that includes Doctor Doom? Like, they've they've tried it twice already, and it doesn't really work because Doom is such a complex and interesting character that he's always underdeveloped. He's always underdeveloped, no matter no matter what you do with him. So you kind of he kind of almost needs his own movie, but I don't want to see it in the Fox verse. I want to see it in the Marvel universe. I don't know. It sucks. I mean, oh, it's 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 okay news because I trust Noah Hawley, but overall it sucks because these characters still aren't with Marvel, and I don't know when that when that's gonna happen or if it's ever gonna happen. 
if they're ever going to cut a deal with Marvel. Fox is trying some pretty experimental stuff right now, you know, with Deadpool, with Logan. Um, I'm not surprised that they're kind of going, like, the villain mm-hmm. route, because that sort of seems like... Uh, yeah, what else are you going to do, you know? Like, uh, you're um, going to try Fantastic Four again? Yeah, th- this seems like the obvious thing to do. I mean, with, like, Suicide Squad 2, I mean, that was, you know, like, a team of villains, and then, you know, Black Adam, that's... I think they're really trying to tap the villain market. Yeah, I don't I like this idea for the same exact reason I didn't like the Black Adam idea. That being said, we've already had two iterations of the Fantastic Four franchise, so... I mean, this is really the only card they have left in their deck. So I hope it fails miserably. <laughs> uh, but um, it, I, you know, you and the, probably the rest of the internet, which probably means it will. I wouldn't be you know, surprised. Yeah. The internet can, like, if they, like, bandwagon, like, just hate something. It's, yeah, but with Noah Hawley at the helm, or, you know, behind the wheel, it, it's, it's, you know, the internet loves Noah Hawley. So it's, it's a tough call. Yeah. Um, in related news, it was announced today that the senior vice president for Marvel Studios... Jeremy Latcham has left uh, Marvel for 20th Century Fox. I'm assuming for the paycheck. Yeah, I think he's. Um, yeah, I think he's maybe gonna be their Kevin Feige. Yeah, it's a, well the 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 news report. I think it was the Wrap that reported on this. There, they said that he's not going to work on any Marvel projects. He's going to there to create his like his own mini studio and work on original projects. But I'm calling I'm calling bullshit on that. I'm thinking there's a reason why they uh, they stole him away, and that's to help develop their their comic book universe because obviously he knows how to do that really well. Because he was part of Kevin Feige's like inner circle. Yeah, yeah, he's the senior vice president of, of Marvel Studios, um, so you know he's a high ranking influence on these on these films. So he used to be an executive producer on all of them, and uh, he has he's had various roles as he's gone through his career. But yeah, he's he's dealt a lot with these films and is you know uh, a, a minor part of their success so interesting development kind of feels a little soap opera ish <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it unfolds later on so all right going into tv news let's blast through this okay all right we had a defenders uh official trailer too um there was also another trailer uh it was it, it involved stan lee like driving through the streets yeah i did not that was weird it was interesting only in the fact that, like, it was cool kind of imagining how these, like, superhero battles could be happening, like, a half a block away in an alley that you're driving by kind of thing. Like, it felt very real world. Um, but it was mainly just to set up the whole idea that the Punisher is going to be in the Defenders uh, series. So that's cool. It looks yeah. like it's just going to be, like, a little cameo kind of thing. But uh, I was hoping that he would be in there. I know a lot of people were hoping that, and it was just confirmed. So looking forward to that. But he was nowhere to be found in the actual official trailer, yeah. um, official trailer two that came out. Um, but that that one, it showed us not too much more of the story. I don't know, did it? It, was, it, it showed us more of the the villain for sure, Sigourney Weaver's character. Yeah. Um, she seems just to be like another kingpin, you know. But really generic. It's it's hard to really get on board with like this new character that's really menacing that somehow was like lording over Electra and Madame Gao and it's just like eh. I'd rather just have the kingpin back honestly right? right the only way I think they could salvage this from just being you know some kind of disappointing um businesswoman with shady business deals or whatever is if she turns out to be Mephisto like if she turns out to be more of a like we know that this is a mystical universe Daredevil season two and Iron uh, Iron Fist ha- have proved that. So if she's like some kind of like demon or something like Mephisto, how she was ru- rumored to be, I think they could they they could still salvage it that way. And that m- may explain why like there was a clip that was released that showed that Madame Gal was kind of uh, scared of Sigourney. Well, Weaver's that was in the trailer, kind of. Yeah, a little bit of that too. Yeah. So I think Madame Gal is like she's almost a mystical being in herself. She's from Kunzi. Or from Kun Lao, or, or Kun Lun, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know how they're going to portray her character in this. But in the comics, Crane Mother was from Kun Z. Um, so she's kind of a mystical being in herself. So the fact that she'd be afraid of some normal human doesn't ring true to me. I still think that Sigourney Weaver is going to be a demon of some sort. What, what if she's the head of Hydra? Wasn't there also a rumor that she was, um, what's her face? Madam Hydra? Madam Hydra. Yeah, I guess Madam Hydra. Yeah, because she was wearing green, but I think they're done with Hydra for now. After all the movies and all of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, seasons. 
They, I mean, they they went they redid the they sh- they have a Madame Hydra in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It was Ada in the Agents of Shield television show. So, I feel like th- to do it in another television show would just be too much of a repeat. I don't think they'll go down that route. Hmm. Cross your fingers, people. Uh, the show comes out like in a month, uh, a little bit under a month, and so cross your fingers that there's some there's more to her than meets the eye. Was there anything that stood out in the trailer to you? Um, what did you, not too much, you know, you see a lot of them fighting and talking. What kind of pissed me off about this trailer is that it seems less like the defenders, like as a team and more like the two cool kids and the two nerds. Like it, it it annoyed me how much Jessica Jones was like picking on these guys. And there was like no reason, like stop being such a jerk. She's just snarky. Yeah. 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 It's like, he's like, it's my cheat. She's like, it's really not. And he was like, oh, yeah, he has shrimp over there. He's like, you're so weird. You know, nice nice ears. They're horns. You know, just a bunch of stuff like that. You know, stuff that annoyed me. Like, Daredevil and Iron Fist, maybe not so, so much Iron Fist, at least the way he's portrayed here. But they're cool characters. Like, don't talk down to them. Like, when he says, I'm really glad I met you guys, don't be like, I'm not going to give you a hug. It just seems so they cynical. They really don't like each other. It seems like. Yeah, it seems like just like an asshole thing to do. Like, if I were Daredevil, I'd be like, fuck you guys. <laughs> you know well fuck you guys uh, if I were Iron Fist I'd be like I'm gonna take my fist and go home you know <laughs> like I don't need you guys I don't need this shit um so that that annoyed me I hope that I hope that like all those instances were just crammed into this trailer and it's not just you know eight eight episodes or so of them just digging on each other you know it that's not I mean I want to see some tension in the beginning and everything like that but I don't want to see as much sarcasm and, and like bullying like 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 immature picking on each other you know what i mean honestly that's really what jessica jones is though i mean valid but you also see luke cage do it when yeah he's like, that... i'm not gonna hug you did he assume that you were gonna hug him <laughs> no then Jeez. shut up god damn it i'm pissed off Jeez. i don't no, know why. okay i'm not gonna lie this this trailer like didn't leave me with the, like the best feeling and i don't know why I, I don't know if it's just, like, Iron Fist and just still, like, the bad taste from that. <laughs> but, um, I, I... I'm still hoping he'll be cooler in this than he was in his own show. Yeah. Um, I... I don't have the highest hopes. Um... Well, okay, so the first four episodes have already gone for out for a review. And they've been mixed. Uh, so you really have to go into the show with the right expectations. Um, one of the reasons they've been mixed is because I guess in the first four episodes, not too much happens. Like they don't even, damn it. They don't even meet until the end of the third episode. It's all like story set up and stuff. So even though the fact that this season has less episodes than the traditional Marvel Netflix season, it still seems like there's like a lot of filler. Like this maybe could have been a movie, even like a Netflix original movie as opposed to, to, uh, to a series. But, uh, so just going with the right expectations, I think, and you'll be fine. Assume that they're not going to meet until the end of the third episode, and then they'll build from there. Third episode in an eight-episode series would be like the end of the first act anyway, so... Yeah, that's it, true. It works, I think. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, that's that's that. Yeah. Tell us about all the CW shows. There... Yeah, there's so many CW shows. Uh, they released trailers for all of them, sort of. There was no Black Lightning trailer. There was this, like, interesting sort of, like, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. I guess it's it's sort of, it was, like, it was like DC's sort of, like, version of the Stan Lee thing. Where okay. they, like, touched on all their characters. But it was, like, an artist, like, sketching. And, like, you know, they, they showed, like, comic art side by side with, uh, you know, the show uh, stills and stuff like that and footage. Um, it was kind of interesting. And then it kind of, like, sort of went through all their heroes and all their shows and then so we have went Supergirl. Okay. We have uh, Flash, Legends Legends of Tomorrow, Arrow, and now, of course, Black Lightning. Um, and they didn't show any new footage. I don't I don't think there was any new footage for Black Lightning that we didn't see from the, the trailer uh-huh. uh, earlier. Um, uh, so, I, I, you know, I thought they were going to have a Black Lightning trailer. They, they didn't. But they had trailers for everything else. And nothing really happened in them, honestly. Which are you looking forward to the most? Legends of Tomorrow, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, okay, that one had the most, uh, like, new sort of... Um, footage? Footage. Yeah. Uh, like, like, the Arrow one was really mostly just a recap of the previous season, which was cool. 
which is great and fine by me because like the left on such a cliffhanger. It's like, Oh my gosh, I really don't want to almost know what happens. And like, we do like learn sort of which characters do kind of survive based on, based on this, at least because like everyone's life is in jeopardy at the, at the, at the end of season at this last season, season five arrow. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but, but I mean, it's, 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 uh, it is. It was a cool, cool trailer. And I'm really excited for for Supergirl. I'm not terribly excited for Flash, which is kind of disappointing. Barry Allen isn't in the the teaser really at all. Really? Um, but well, definitely, what, what was so exciting to you about Legends of, of Tomorrow? The setup at the end of the past season is essentially that they broke time. So you have like this like city. Didn't they already do that with the Flash? Didn't Barry already break time? Sort of, yeah. So they're doing it but again. They, these guys like super broke time. It's like <laughs> T Rexes side by side with like futuristic buildings and stuff. Oh just, shit! Okay. They, they, it's just the coolest scenarios and the ones that they tease like in this in, in, in the trailer for for that show are just they look like they're it's gonna be so much fun, just so cool. So I'm guessing this doesn't still take place in the same timeline as the rest of the CW shows. Oh no, no! It's it's definitely it's it's its own like pocket kind of thing. Okay. Um, I don't know, and it just I uh, for uh, I can't remember who was teased as the Supergirl villain. It looked very dramatic though, uh, for for the Supergirl show and for like the Flash. I heard that the 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 Thinker was gonna be the villain, but it's like the samurai kind of guy. I don't know if he's the villain for just the first series or it's just a, yeah, or, yeah, first episode, but it's just, you know, another villain that's threatening to destroy the city, which is getting kind of old. Um, I yeah. think arrow did a really good job of, of sort of avoiding that in this past season. I don't know. A more personal villain. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So personal. So, so good. Good gosh. That's cool. Um, but yeah, so that, that was sort of the, the, the CW stuff. I also saw the, the Gotham trailer, which it was actually also more of like a like a recap and then sort of a tease. But again, I'm not watching the show, so I have no idea where the, like the uh, like the recap ended and like the new sort of like teaser footage began. It looked interesting though. It looks like he's finally becoming Batman, even though he hasn't had like his full training yet. I have no idea what training. But he's, he's like had. already fighting. Cr- okay. It's like Catwoman is becoming Catwoman, Riddler and Penguin are fighting. Interesting. There's the Scarecrow. I think that was the big. <laughs> Like the big uh, news to come out of that trailer was was uh, Scarecrow. So, that well, I'm not gonna watch him. So, have fun with all those shows. I have just as many Marvel shows though. Um, yeah, now you do. Yeah, one of them being the Inhumans. Uh, they, we got a new trailer for that, and uh, you know it was probably the best one. It looks like they finally got a decent editor to work on it this time. <laughs> um, it starts off. Uh, I guess in Hawaii, where uh, Triton finds a new Inhuman. And Triton looks weird. I did not think he was going to look that mm, weird. He looks a little cheap. Like The makeup looks they really They kind of just like, painted his face green. Like, I thought they were going to go, like, the like he should have, like, scales, scales and yeah, stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, I've seen depictions of him in the comics where he looks very alligator-y. Yeah. And, but in this one, he looks very... Just green, uh, like skin. original appearance, Triton, like <laughs> back in the sixties by, by Jack Kirby, so that's a little bit disappointing. Like, it's very minimalistic, much like all of these Inhumans designs and sets. I I think feel, um, which is disappointing because Inhumans themselves are so out there that you want to see a little bit more variety, and a little bit more interest in their design. Yeah, and, and in you know the locale and everything like that. Um, Lockjaw's as cute as ever. Um, I think the the way they set it up, like promoting the uh, the IMAX thing, like showing that yeah the, the the trailer like shows some of the scenes like really tiny, d- uh, despite you know uh, the standard YouTube size, but then like as the scene plays, it'll grow bigger to like fill the screen. So you really get this kind of sense of scale growing for sure, and it's amazing how effective effective it is even on a small YouTube it, screen. I didn't even realize like what how small it was. Uh, when I first watched it until like they blew it up to like IMAX size. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was, yeah, you're right. It was effective. Yeah, it was. Um, I think this is, uh, it, just the way it's been edited. Like we don't really necessarily learn too much or see too much that's new, but everything is just presented better. I guess Maximus's speeches are presented better. Uh, the characters are presented better. We get to see some 
interesting looking inhumans. Not everyone just looks inhuman. You see like a lady yeah. with like a both like bug eyes. Yeah, and well, that was one of the complaints like, we had from the last trailer was that the inhumans that Maximus was talking to didn't look strange enough. Yeah. But we got a look at some of the other ones, and they have just weird, weird looking, yeah, yeah, weird eyes. Gross. It's. I wouldn't say it's like I'm. I'm happy with it. It's. It's just. It's. It's like a very slight. It's still minimal, but it, at least it's not normal. I guess. Yeah. Um, we see Karnak fight some dudes. We see Gorgon fight some dudes. Uh, that's really cool. We see Medusa, the, the probably the biggest reveal she speaks. of this. Oh, she, yeah, she speaks, speaks, but she also uses her hair. Yeah. We, we see what it's actually like in motion. I know we're, we're all still have the recent memory of her horrible wig in the Entertainment Weekly photo where it just looks like yeah. a, a red butt on her head. Yeah. <laughs> And I think it's just the photo. I mean, like, it still looks not how it should. It should always... It should look much more voluminous and, and moving and interesting than it does. Fluid. But it doesn't look as bad as that photo does. Uh, and it's still... I mean, it, it's still obviously a wig, but it doesn't look so obviously a wig, I guess. Especially when she's using it, when, when it's moving around, and it's, like, grabbing um, a Maximus, and obviously the special effects aren't finished yet. But... I, I know it, it looked it looked cool. It kind of I don't think it looked cool. I I was still disappointed with it even how that was portrayed. Really? Yeah. I thought it looked cool. Um, I'm not pulling a 180 on my feelings for the show, but I'm pulling a 90 degree turn. I think. Um, I'm still gonna see it in IMAX just because it's not often that you get this opportunity to do that. So I'll be seeing it in IMAX and I'll be watching it on ABC and uh, we'll probably review the IMAX experience on this podcast when it comes out. Really? It's just a standalone? We're not going to do like a full series? No. Review? No. We'll just do the standalone IMAX uh, showing. Okay. So uh, as a review, because I think it'll be somewhat of a, not self-contained story, but um, somewhat isolated story, at least the first two episodes, possibly. Anyway, it is a big, another big surprise at the end of that trailer was that Maximus is uh, a human, um, allegedly, I think. Mm-hmm. So it's revealed that he's gone, uh, he's undergone teragenesis and nothing happened. And so he's kind of, uh, the only reason he's not working down in the mines with the Alpha Primitives is because he's uh, related to the king. Yeah. He's the king's brother. And that's kind of where his motivation comes from and, and his resentment but in the comics, Maximus is a low-level telepath, as well as a genius. And I'm wondering if maybe he still is in this in this uh, show. He's just and, not aware of it. And either he's not aware of it, or he's hiding it from everybody else because he doesn't want them to know. Um, for some sinister purpose. I think just based on, on like the shot of his, the, his like his face, the way he was emoting, I think he's he doesn't know. It's possible. Yeah, I mean he's a good actor. Like when she says. He's like, respect me as your new king. And she's like, never. You're just a human. Um, and yeah, his expression when she says that, I don't know if it takes place in the same scene. But he's, yeah, he's a good actor. I, I'm not going to say looking forward to it because you guys already know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's coming up soon here. Um, actually, I so next month is going to be the Defender show. And then a few weeks after that is going to be the Inhuman show. So. Uh, have a lot uh, to look forward to in the coming months. Yeah, I guess it's Marvel stuff, so who cares? But I guess everybody, everybody cares. You know what seems interesting for DC is uh, Krypton. Um, they had a sh- really, really short teaser, like, and it was no new footage from uh, the leaked one that we saw before, uh, or. Uh, I, I think this is the first official one. I think, yes, it is. Yeah, the the released. previous one was leaked. On purpose, I think, to gauge interest. Yeah. Um, and th- this was, yeah, again, nothing we haven't seen before from the leak and really not too much information. What did come out of Comic-Con, though, was the fact that it had, has, like, this really interesting angle that I had no idea existed on the show previously. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it may be, like, a new development for all I know. Because I, I didn't see any hint of this in, in the leaked trailer. Uh-huh. But I guess the show involves a group of DC DC supervillains traveling back in time to prevent like the existence of Superman. They travel back to like old Krypton. <clears throat> and I guess the show has Adam Strange and Hawkwoman 
like traveling back in time with the supervillains to try and stop them. That's really cool. I like we just had our Adam Strange uh episode where he fought against Star Lord. Yeah. So yeah, it'd be cool to see a live action version of him. Yeah, if it, when the show comes out and like you want to learn more about Adam Strange, definitely listen to that episode. Um it's I've, I've always liked the character. Um and I think he's he you know, he's a good like space faring kind of superhero. So I, I think it makes sense. Hawkwoman, um I think makes less sense. Like she's already been a part of like the Flash TV show and and you know uh, Legends, Legends of, of Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. And, you know, so I'm actually kind of surprised they're reusing this this character. But uh, yeah, I was surprised it's not like a Legionnaire or something. Yeah. That'd yeah. Be interesting. Like Cosmic Boy or something. I mean, that'd be cool. The Legionnaires yeah. have a connection to Superboy and the fact that like Superboy actually traveled to the future and, and was part of their team. That would have made more sense than Hawkwoman, I think. Yeah. How many of these DC f- TV shows are going to deal with time travel? You already have <laughs> Legends of Tomorrow, you have The Flash, and now you have this time travel Krypton show. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's an uh, it's it's an overused it's interesting. No. Plot device. I don't The the Flash time travel aspect is is very different from from how Legends of Tomorrow uses it though. Okay. Um but the this the show just got slightly more interesting to me, which is I, and I I can almost guarantee that this was like not the original premise because I remember when David Goyer was still like, oh yeah this is you know in in DCEU continuity in the Man and, of Steel verse yeah, yeah Man of Steel verse and you know it, it's it's you know all connected and st- I this sounds like it's definitely not going to be okay um interesting so are you gonna, you're gonna watch it though I'm gonna try yeah. if it's on Hulu I don't know. I still don't know if sci-fi is on Hulu. I need to figure that out. <laughs> I need to figure out a way to watch it. At least the pilot. At least the pilot. I like to give shows at least the pilot, like yeah. I did with Powerless. But yeah. uh, I ended up saying that whole thing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that takes us actually to the end of the news. Um, it, overall, it, it, a decent Comic-Con, uh, we, especially for Marvel, you know, Sure. Because because we got it was good for DC we got too. trailers we got concept art we got casting we got the whole shebang so if we had to declare a winner between Marvel and DC on who won Comic Con, uh, yeah it's Marvel. Eh. Sorry well, DC, you know, better D- luck next year. We gave this one to you because we won the past two years. We're tired of winning, <laughs> you know. No, I mean DC got everything really essentially. Besides, casting. I mean, we had concept art for Aquaman. We had a. a a trailer we had uh release release dates yeah that's true to the to 2019 uh is gonna be a big year for dc obviously next year is not gonna be that big movie wise no. for dc because yeah. you only have aquaman coming out and that's at the end of 2018 yeah like the very end next year's gonna suck so 2019 though you, you probably may have three or four mo- dc films coming out so that should be exciting for you yeah um yeah it'll be a long year for you yeah year and a half yeah Anyway, you know, uh, the years between Man of Steel and BBS were so long. It was like, what was it? Oh, uh, yeah. Three years, four years? And it was too long. Yeah, 2011 to 2016. Yeah. Long time. So that does it for the main meat of the episode. Um, we've been getting letters from people um, through our, our email. And we have the bad habit of just responding to the readers through the email and not even like reading the letters on the show, which is what a podcast is supposed to do, I think. So uh, I want to take uh, this uh, a quick moment to kind of introduce a new letter segment to the show, um, which will be consistent as long as we keep getting letters consistently. Um, but uh, this particular letter came uh, from Shane's Anger. Um, I think I read that right. It's either Shane Sanger or Shane's Anger, um, through, through uh, who reached out to us uh, via dynamicdualpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, Shane said, Just listened to your Spider-Man review episode and didn't hear you mention this. In the movie, the Midtown School's mascot is a tiger. It's even shown running around the halls a couple times. I totally, totally think that at some point, some MJ, Zendaya or not, will call Peter Tiger because he is a Midtown Tiger, possibly while they are competing on the trivia team. Thanks for the show, Shane. I think it's a pretty good theory. Um, it makes sense. I don't know if he came up with the theory, but if he did, you heard it here, folks. All credit is due to Shane Zanger or Shane Singer. Um, 
I think it is, it's an interesting idea. Maybe he's like wearing like a Letterman's jacket or maybe his like his his trivia team jacket or something like that. Some kind of reference to Tiger. It can't just be a co- coincidence that it was the Midtown Tigers, right? No, absolutely. They I, might be playing the long game. That's a that's a I didn't even notice that. That's that would be a great setup. Yeah. I really hope it's not as in diet. Like, face it, Tiger. Yeah. Midtown Tiger. Yeah. I yeah. think it's a, it's a solid theory and, and and thank you very much for for uh, to Shane for for bringing that to our attention because that's not something that I've even heard of honestly, so it'll be cool if it comes out to be true. So I like theories. Yeah, theories I like coming cool. up with theories. And I like I the th- flashpoint theory that I had. <laughs> we'll see. It's not really mine. I don't know. Conjecture is fun. Yeah. Um. And so yeah, that that does it for the letters. That does it for this episode. In fact, uh, uh, before we sign off, let's go into the hint for the trivia question, which was. Uh, what was the first DC film and the first Marvel film to have a panel at San Diego Comic-Con's massive exhibition venue, Hall H? So if you're familiar with uh, San Diego Comic-Con or you've been there, you know that Hall H is like the big, huge venue where uh, a lot of the big projects get attention. Um, it's where a lot of the studios show off their biggest uh, fanboy-related projects. Uh, you, you probably want to search when Hall H was first came about. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. And whoa. Hints, dude. Oh, okay. Too many hints. Okay, so the, your hint is that um, David Goyer was actually involved on both panels, for the, both the Marvel panel and the DC panel, for uh, the, those first movies in Hall H. Yeah. All right. So that's it. That, that's it for this episode. Uh, we will see you guys again in two weeks. Uh, again, if uh, you like what you hear, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, please, because two weeks is a long-ass time, and for some reason it just seems to be getting longer and longer and longer. It does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but we are a bi- bi-weekly podcast, and uh, if you hit subscribe, then uh, you'll definitely get those uh, updates as we release them every other Saturday. Yeah. Um, and and if, if you, know, you want to follow us on, on Twitter and stuff like that, we're releasing news all the time. And stuff like that. So if you want to, you know, be amongst the first, maybe, to hear, you know, certain news items and stuff like that. And, and just keep track of, of what we're doing and just keep us, you know, on your radar. Yeah. Then definitely, you know, uh, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on Twitter, you know, all the all the good stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah. the next episode... Yeah, it's uh, gonna be it's gonna be a, a dual episode. We haven't had we one haven't of those had one in a long while. time. Yeah, ever since the the cyborg Iron Man fight that we discussed. Yeah, uh, this next uh, episode is gonna be. Uh, do you want to say it? Yeah, it's uh, a <laughs> katana versus Electra. Okay, Just that's sort okay. of setting up uh, the Defender show because the the Defender sh- uh, show review will follow that. But uh, it was actually my my daughter a request for my daughter. She's six years old, and for some reason, really really likes the character of Katana. Like, I actually just bought her a Katana Hot Wheels. The what? other day, we were at the store, and there was, like, a Hot Wheels, and one of them was Katana. She was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I got it for her. She's, I, yeah, she's super excited for this. She keeps asking me when we're going to do it. So two weeks. Two weeks. That's Katana versus Electra. That'll be an interesting fight. It's not one that I even really considered. Uh, yeah. I think you just really wanted to include Katana in a fight, and I guess it, it, it just worked out well yeah, with Electra. The timing, so yeah, that'll be yeah. That'll be fun. That'll be interesting. And, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll go ahead and talk to you guys then. In two weeks, look forward to that. And uh, until then, up, up, and away. True believers. <laughs>